Hey everybody, guess what? We are back. This is African Frame Podcast. Yes, I do know that it's more than two people this time around, but yes, we do have special guests. I have Bugmeister Cool and I have Zono Zuko. But yes, uh, let's just get uh, started. Uh, as usual, I am Mr. Extraordin, uh, and then I have Rob Sibeko with me. He's an author, he's a screenwriter, he's a film director, and... Um, I'm just going to let our guests to introduce themselves. If you're new, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell icon so that you can get notified of any other films that Rob and I might be releasing in the future. What is African Frame? African Frame is a film podcast. What we basically do is we dissect films. Um, but like It could be any film that you can think of. And then we just go through it act by act, scene by scene. Uh, we talk about other things as well, including trivia, casting, behind the scenes footage and stuff like that. We also give our rating on the thing. Uh, think of it like DVD commentary, as I've mentioned before. You know, back in the days when you would uh, put in your DVD and then there'll be bonus features and then you'll check the commentary. It's something like that, but we just narrate the movie uh, and, and then uh, we just go through it. We don't actually show you the visuals. We do show some clips here and there. But uh, African Frame now is also expanding, by the way. We're going to be doing some different stuff. Uh, as we've done uh, last week, we've done uh, the new Metro uh, thing where we sh we show you guys the movies that are going to be coming out in the month. But then we're also doing something as well where we're going to be talking about film news, film news, TV news, series and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to be giving our thoughts and stuff like that, which is why we got these two guys here, which are, you know, very well versed in these kind of things. Uh, there's another guy, Deban Lohala. I'm sure you guys are, are familiar with him. But uh, yeah, these two guys will let you know what they do, who they are, so that you can get an idea about what they do and who they are. So we'll start with Buckmeister Cool. What's up, African Frame? It's your boy, Buckmeister. Twice the nice that you are used to. Shab Blemson. I can't do my other one because we're not talking anime, so I'm just going to keep this in a regular intro. <laughs> so you can find me on uh, Meister Geek Media and Buckmeister Cool Reacts. So... Oh, you know what would be fun? Rob, we should probably get you on an episode of Geek Heresy. I, I, I gotta think about it. But anyway, basically, Meister Geek Media, we have a game show called Geek Heresy, where we test friendships and, you know, how people feel about, like, anime and manga and movies and all of that stuff. <laughs> um, and then uh, you get interviews there. Uh, there's a Comic-Con vlog coming. I'm I'm a bit slow with it because uh, that there's another thing that I'm going to talk about, which is, you know, related to the thing behind me. But anyway... Um, what's this? Yeah, so there's going to be um, reviews, uh, comic book reviews, there's going to be interviews on there and all of that stuff. And as I said, the game show. Then there is My Sticky, uh, Buck My Cool Reacts, excuse me. Buck My Cool Reacts. So I just react to popular culture stuff like videos or trailers and all of that stuff. I have some music on there as well, like lyric videos and everything. So you can get that type of content over there. And then, um, as I said, a lot of this stuff is slowed down because of the Recast T'Challa campaign, which is related to the picture behind me. So Recast T'Challa campaign across all my social medias, Buckmeister Cool on all my social medias. If you type that in all my geek media, you'll probably find me. But um, yeah. And then um, behind me is the issue for issue one of Black Panther versus Kang, which is on Webtoons. So issues one through three are on Webtoons right now. You can go pick that up and read all of that stuff as well. It's related to the Recast T'Challa campaign. And there's going to be an animation that I'm planning around Black Panther versus Kang. So you can go support me on Kofi at Meister Geek Media on Kofi. So there you can drop a rand, two rand, ten dollar, whatever the exchange rate is. And you can help fund this animation. We're still 7% of the way through. So, you know, thank you to everybody that has donated. But if you do want to help fast track that process, please feel free to go drop some money. And don't worry, I won't politician. I won't, you know, take the check and disappear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is Bugmeister Cool. Do check him out. I'll leave links in the description below. But before we go to Zanazuga, I just want to remind you guys to get Jin's War. This is Rob's book. Um, you can get it on Google Play. Uh, there's also a link in the description below. But you can also check out some of his stuff as well. Um, I think last time he was showing us a book that he actually printed. It looks really great. Uh, I think it's... Uh, wait. Uh, we, can't, we can't see it. We can't see it. Uh, Heist. Heist. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Oh, did you write that one too? Yeah, I've got four books. <laughs> yeah, I got to. Uh, how, uh, is, are they all the same price as Jin's War? Um, uh, Bludgeon Ball is ten bucks. It's like an intro. 
And then, the, then there's Bludgeon Ball 2, which is called Bludgeon Ball 10 Days. Um, that one is 50 bucks. And then the, the other one, Heist, is 50 bucks. And Jin's War is 50 bucks. Yeah. Okay. So if I you have all like 200 of those bucks, you, you're sorted, right? Okay. I want all of those links. <laughs> they are within my price range. They are in my price range. You know, in Cyril's economy, hey, you, you must count every cent. You must count every cent. Hey, dog. Uh, anyway, yeah, so the other bespectable guy over there, that's Zanazugum Lambo. Uh, so, yeah, man, please introduce yourself. Paton, one game of fire, Lord. Uh, welcome, welcome. I, 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 I have been here before, so uh, you, you know me, uh, Cortezi on all my social media. I just talk a lot of nonsense about anything and everything. So don't expect only anime stuff if you if you come across my social media. Uh, but yeah, let's go. Um, oh, Buckmaster's intro was so long. I feel like uh, I need to say something. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> part-time wingman. Part-time wingman. He was wingmaning for me there on 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 Twitter. <laughs> hey man. Hey man. Hey. You, you gotta let the brother fly, man. You gotta you gotta help the brother fly, man. You gotta help the brother fly. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, let's go. Actually, let's get let's get started. Let's go. Cool, um, cool, cool. All right, guys. So we're gonna be starting with our first topic of the day. We're gonna be talking about Star Wars Acolyte. So yeah, Star Wars is gonna be releasing a series called Star Wars Acolyte, which is basically a prequel. Uh, so these events happen before the Phantom Menace, uh, and the cast includes Kerry and Moss. Most of us know Karen Moss as Trinity in the Matrix, right? It also has, um, who's this lady again? Uh, she was in Colombiana. She was the girl in Col Colombiana. She was also in Everything, Everything. Her name is, what's her name again? Um, Amanda Steinberg. And Amanda Steinberg. Right? Amanda. 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 Amanda, yeah. No, no it's no, Amanda. Amanda. No, it's Amanda. Amanda. No, it's Amanda. Back away, too. Yeah. Like that Yes, Am Amanda. It's Amanda. It's Amanda. <laughs> Amanda. Yeah. So I just wanted to show you guys the cast as well as we uh, go uh, through. And, hey, and I, South Africans are busy, man. Probably one of the parents. South African. Yeah, she's not South probably, African, but uh, uh, the, uh, parents, uh, the parents. No, no, no. no. Like I'm the parents. Saying, when I say she's not South African, I'm talking about the parents. Right. She's not uh, South African, but right. the parents, for whatever reason. They got hold of, they knew of the Mandela story, uh, and then they, oh, the, the Amanda thing sounded cool to them, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, okay. But oh, okay. she's not South African, we can't claim her. Oh, there's no South African. <laughs> she's, not <laughs> she's not Zandile. She, she, she's not Zandile Kat. She's All not right. Gugumba Taro. Uh, we'll, claim, we'll claim the name then, it's fine. We'll claim oh, the name. Oh, Brissi Dibe God, 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 or something like that, yeah. Uh, but Jody Taylor Smith is in there as well. Oh, fun, fun fact, um, was this, uh, just so you guys know, the whole Wakanda for everything in the comic books before the movies, that was uh, uh, the, the catchphrase in Wakanda. It was yeah, Amandla. Amandla, yeah. Because uh, I remember... Except they said Amandla. Yeah, they, they said Amandala. And I was yeah. like, why, why, why? <laughs> I remember I had to fight with somebody online. I was like, no, it's Amandla. No, it's Amandala. I'm, dog, I'm telling you now. Check my location. <laughs> Dude, you're South African. Like, why would you be... Okay? <laughs> 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 you ever heard the British person say Lucas Kadebe? Oh, Lucas Radaby. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude, I, used to watch, is... I used to watch him there at Leeds. You know that dude is so popular in Leeds. It's ridiculous, bro. He's got a street named after him. He's got a beer named after him. Yep. He's got um a bus oh, stop no. named after him. Oh, he's he's got there. um the 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 band Kaiser Chiefs. Yeah. They got their name from from his from the club Kaiser Chiefs. Yes. Um, oh, he's, he he goes the oh he's got a suite at Ellen Road. He's got the Lucas Hat there's a Lucas Hadebe suite. So if he, if he lands in Leeds, that man pays for nothing, bro. He's a legend. That man though. pays for he's a legend, though. They still call him captain. They still call him captain till this day. It was like his birthday a couple of weeks ago, and people people from Leeds were still saying captain, my captain. Uh, oh, and him. also the um, the uh, there's a lot of kids called Lucas. Because of him, oh, he yes. needs right now. Yes, I've heard about that. Like he, he was, he was, he was that popular, bro. He's colonizing that. <laughs> hey, dog. Um, one of his most famous moments in a lead shirt. Uh, ex excuse the the tangent. Um, uh, the goalkeeper got a red card. 
the the goalkeeper got a red card in about the 30th minute. Holy cow. Right? The 30th minute. And they didn't have a, a, a reserve goalkeeper on the oh, bench. Oh, yes. Yes. And he so came he in, had right? to be... And mm. he had to be uh, the goalkeeper. Right. Yes, against two. Against Manchester... The Sir Alex Ferguson, Manchester United. <laughs> I'm glad and, you... <laughs> You know, yeah, so, no, you have to specify. No, I have to specify because this is not, not, not this reincarnation that we have now. <laughs> I'm talking about the Sir Alex Ferguson, yes. Manchester yes. United, and they only lost one no, and they literally scored in like the 80 something minutes. Oh, damn. So you can ball. imagine a whole defender kept cl- almost kept a clean, sh- a, a clean, clean sheet, a clean, yes. a clean sheet <laughs> against Manchester United. Oh, damn. That's amazing. That's, That's amazing. Okay, yeah, so going back to the cast, guys, I just want to say... Uh, Kai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, the other guy, person that I recognize here is Charlie Bennett. He is in Russian Doll. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Russian Doll, but I don't oh, know any, everybody really. else here. Lee Jun Zhao, I've, I've seen. I've seen him before. Squid Games. Uh, oh, 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 the main character from Squid Games. I believe so. Yes. Did, I wonder if they had him dub for Squid Games because his English is great in this trailer. So I'm yeah, just like, he, I wonder if he dubbed. It's as if he was American in here, dog. Oh. I think that's why I didn't even think it was him. Yeah, it's him. <laughs> that is crazy. That's very um, crazy. But anyway, from what I hear, the character that Kerry Ann Moss is portraying in uh, Acolyte is basically inspired by Trinity. The reason they, they even included her in uh, this thing is because... I don't know about that. I don't well, know about that. That's what I read. I don't know if it's true. If she true flies, I'm going to be angry. <laughs> I don't no, the Force can do anything. Like, Leia came <laughs> out of space. Force. Like, <laughs> like, Leia, can we Leia not... pulled a can Superman in... <laughs> the Force jump. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't a Force jump. She was literally dead in space, and then she just decided, oh. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I think they rewrote that scene. I think she probably might have died, but they had to rewrite it. Yeah. No, Makes I thought no it sense. was like a great send-off. I was about to shed tears. I was like, oh, man, Leia's out the game. And then she starts floating, and I was like, no. <laughs> so what do you guys think of the trailer? Uh, so it's... I'm the thing on. is, after Ahsoka, right? After mm. Ahsoka, it's just like, I don't know if I'm supposed to be excited about any of this. Because Ahsoka also had a pretty decent trailer. From right. what I remember. Um, and I'm just like, yeah, they've got the music. They've got these cuts. You know, they've got, like, some flipping things. But when we get into it, is the action going to be that consistent? Are the performances going to uh, be that consistent? Or are they only showing the us the best parts? Make- yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then also on top right. of that, it's like, do I care? Because I, I'm actually kind of sick of Star Wars's history, if, if you understand what I'm saying. I get like, you. it feels like they keep messing up the future, so we have to keep going backwards. And it's just like, when to when do we get to the point? Up the future. Yeah, and I'm saying, when do we get, like, are we going to get to the point where it's like, you know, the first Jedi ever who ever discovered the temples and the force and it's going to be like this ancient history where this guy is wandering in a cave and he discovers like a Macran, what was it? A Macran crystal or whatever it was. And then he discovers the force or something. I, like, how far are we going to go back with this? I I'm just like... You. I agree with you because I was also thinking about Balen Skull actually during the day. Like, what, yeah. what what's going to happen to him? What, what's his story? What's where, where is he? Well, just so you guys know, yes, actually they have gone ten thousand years back. Um, I forgot it's called Jedi Old, not Old Republic, but something else. The, something old, order. the order, something like that. Something the like that goes back ten thousand years. So yes, they will go back. Yes, <laughs> I don't even understand the question. Yeah. <laughs> no, but um, I, and also like shout out to the fake. I'm saying shout out to the fake ass Vader in this trailer because I'm just uh, like, oh god, you guys cannot let this visual go. Vader, dog. And here's the thing: it's so funny that you mention that because technically, if you think about Star Wars, right, Vader wore the thing because he had burnt in fire. That's why he wore it. Yes. Why? And Kylo Ren wore it because he was trying to honor Vader. So why is a guy from like 100 years back wearing it? It doesn't make Makes, sense. Does, doesn't make sense. Look, apart from being burnt, Vader didn't have arms or legs anymore. So he's practically a cyborg. What parts? Yes. So now who's this? Why is this? I, I don't know. And why are they doing the Vader hallway thing again? Like he's walking yeah. in the shadows with the red lightsaber. Like uh, Darth, Ma- do a Darth Maul. Switch it up. Yeah, someone Maybe a Sarge Ventress. Something. 
exactly. Someone once said the problem with Star Wars is that it's too small. And I think they're right. Uh, right. So it's, it's small. It's, it's, it's an entire universe, but it's this big. And it doesn't make sense. That, I think they need to come up with new ideas. They can do it. I believe. No, I mean, like, that's why Star Wars Visions was so cool. Because, like, it was like, we're not Luke Skywalkering. We're not, yeah. like, this is something else entirely. Like, that whole samurai who, was, who looked like he used to be a Sith, apparently. Because yeah. he was using a red, and then he was fighting other Sith to protect the town, Samurai Seven style or Seven right. Samurai style, whichever one. Um, yeah, like stuff like that to me is like, and also I feel like they need to introduce new classes. Like for example, I know that uh, people reject this idea, but I like the idea of people who are resistant to the Force but can't use it. Like it's like they, it's like they, it's like you know, not not specifically they're resistant in the fact that you can't use the force against them, but like if you try to force choke them, they have a technique they can break out of a force choke, oh, but right. you can still, but you can still chuck things at them and stuff like up. that. Um, the the flying guy from the Phantom Menace who can't be med- who can't be mind tricked. Something just- like that, yeah. You just can't like, mind trick him. Yeah, like start introducing stuff like that, and then also like you know. Don't introduce new characters and screw them over. You know, high Finn, high Poe, actually high Ray. Hi, Sabine. Everybody got screwed. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. Like Ray, oh all her personality from Force Awakens just got kicked out of out of the window when it came to Last Jedi, and then it was worse when we got to Rise of Skywalker. Because I mean, I saw like ten minutes of that, and I was just like, I'm out. Yeah, because so, every director was trying to fix the last director's problems. So yeah. It ended up with a mess. Yeah, yeah I, so I'm just saying, for me, I'm not really excited about, like, Star Wars anything. And I'm not a super fan where I'm going to go back into the lore and try and learn everything. Because it feels like homework at this point. It feels like... Mm. <laughs> I hear you. I, 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 I hear you. I hear you. Nothing. Like, for example, I cannot go into Marvel. I and mean, you can. So, like, to me, that's like... I like Star Wars more than Marvel, so I can kind of dig into it. Even though what I'm seeing now, I'm not liking that much because it's cliche. Because... Mm. Oh, you're telling me there's something wrong with the Jedi again? Again? They went from being the good guys in 4, 5, and 6 to being flawed in 1, 2, 3. Because remember, there were problems with the Jedi in 1, 2, 3. That's why, that's why Anakin... I took up the clones and whatever, yeah. There's problems with them. That's why um, they lost, because there were problems. Then in four, then in six, seven, eight, whatever, seven, seven, eight, nine, there's problems with them again. Now we're doing it again. There's problems... Where, I thought it was supposed to be good versus evil. When do we get good Jedi again? Like, do you know what I mean? That's why I think um, uh, Obi Wan stood out so much. Evil yes. must be evil must be the Jedi, yes. apparently. Yes. Young Padawan. Like, <laughs> you know, again, because you see, what's, what's nice about Obi Wan, right? There's someone broke it down nicely for me because when you watch the the, the prequels, right? Obi Wan is loyal to the to the Jedi, right? The Jedi. Yes. Yeah. Whereas other people question it, right? And other people challenge it. And because of his absolute loyalty, he doesn't see what's happening to Anakin. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So he ends up, um, because of that loyalty, he ends up falling away from it. And then the, him and Anakin end up clashing. Like he doesn't even properly like try to match Anakin halfway because he's so loyal to the, to the Jedi Order. Do you know what I mean? And then yeah. think he's against the Jedi Order. So they can only clash. If you mm-hmm. think about it, rewatch the movies again. It's actually... It's surprise. It's better writing than it deserves to be, if you consider how. And and he was he was getting promoted in every sequel. Like he yeah. became like for like a council member, Jedi master, this and that. While not Anakin was doing, we found out you Jedi, but not a monster, master ever. <laughs> no, no, I'm but, talking about Qui Gon, not. Uh, oh, Qui Gon, yes. I mean, sorry. Um, no, Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan yeah. Oh, yes. No, I think the thing is with those movies is that they just didn't have time to breathe. It was kind of like they had to cram a lot of development into, yeah. like, those... Like, if if I was writing it, basically, like, um, the OG Star Wars would have been the 7, 8, 9, and yeah. then we would have had three movies where uh, we build up Anakin and Obi-Wan and they bond... And then we get to four, five, and then we get to, I mean, one, two, three, and then we get four, five, and six, where we get the fall of Anakin. Because I feel like, I mean, when we get to, um, what was it? Revenge of the Sith, right? Like, you get to see some, like, bonding moments with them, and you're just like, yeah, if we got more of that, this would be way more tragic. 
because like the way everything like the way everything plays out like the way vader comes in in a new hope and the banter that him and i mean that fight is boring as hell so it's like at least the dialogue is decent thank right. god <laughs> because right. otherwise like you know, i would have been asleep uh, personally but it's like yeah it's more to you if they'd been more explaining Do yeah you know I mean? but instead we end up with people talking remember it's people in rooms talking it's supposed yeah. to be an adventure series why am I yeah. listening to a Senate meeting for two hours? Right. Anyway, I'm sorry, Zuko. What do you what do you think, bro? We've been talking. Yeah, you've been quiet, bro. <laughs> I literally I'm bored out of my mind of you know, Star Wars. <laughs> I, mm. I'm like I'm like I'm literally I feel like I'm those people who say no more superhero movies. Yeah. I'm like yeah. no more Star Wars. I'm 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 at that point. I haven't even yeah, Star Wars fatigue. I have Star Wars fatigue. I haven't, I didn't finish the Kylo Ren ones. I was just like, what is going on here? Because I thought Finn was going to, I thought Finn was going to have a bigger role. Hey, don't. And, <laughs> and then when I saw the first one and I was like, so Ufini and Emanje, and then there's no Kylo Ren is like, oh, oh, no, Kylo Ren said he wanted to train Ray, not, not Finn. Okay. No, yeah. the other thing was is that that movie so, lied and then to us I haven't even watched ah- Ahsoka because wow the the reviews from the panel <laughs> oh my did goodness. not did, did not no. give me hope to watch it. Um, I haven't watched Obi Wan. I haven't like oh. I think the last movie I watched of Star Wars is that one with um with Donnie Yen in it. Oh, oh, Rogue One. Rogue one. Oh. Yeah. That, that's the last Star Wars movie I have watched, so I don't even. The and then obviously the the one with Finn. Oh wait, because which one came out first? Was it? No, it oh, Force Rogue... Awakens came out first. Force Awakens. Force Awakens. First. So Rogue One came out in the middle of all that. Yeah. 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 Okay, so then Rogue One is the last Star Wars movie because so, so I watched Force Awakens. Last, you, you didn't get to Last Jedi. I dog. I didn't even bother because um, after the whole Finn debacle in the first one already, I was like, but. Ufin, I thought he was because he was a he was a clone, and he and he got conscious. So I figured something great was gonna happen, and all mm. I saw was he was the funny sidekick, and yeah. I was like, oh, another no, I mean another black is... funny sidekick. Oh, yeah. how original! I mean that movie was like, that, huh? yeah, I'm saying that movie was so inconsistent. Well, one, uh-huh. he's not a clone because it was just like they were just yeah. taking people off planet yeah. now to become stormtroopers. So they were just brainwashing people. They weren't cloning them anymore. Because yeah. oh, apparently okay. there was like an issue with cloning. Something to do with, um, what's his name, Django Fett? Something yeah. with how the Boba Django Fett, Fett clone... Yeah, Boba Fett's right. dad. Like something like the clones. Something was happening with them anyway. Watch the bad the, yeah. yeah, the Star Wars people who know will leave co- leave paragraphs in the comment section to yeah, explain please. for. Uh, yeah. Give us that Attack of the Clones horrible film analogy. Oh, it's the bad batch to to understand what's going on about the cloning situation where you see them getting replaced, where you see the clones getting fired and being removed. It's the cartoon, the bad batch, watch that. Oh, okay. I think that it's that looked decent. It, that looked decent. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. I saw the trailer of that one. That looked it, decent. It's very kid friendly, even though the far last few episodes are actually kind of dark, but it's very kid friendly, decent pacing. It's all right. Seven out of ten. So you see, so they can make a, a, a fun kid Star Wars. So why can't we just make a fun one for adults as well? Huh? That's <laughs> what George <laughs> Lucas intended for in the beginning when he did A New Hope, if you yeah. remember. A New Hope was not meant to be like this serious dark thing. It was just meant to be like a kid-friendly adventure. Remember, it's well, I don't know. The thing is, Lucas yeah. is... Uh, the thing is, with Lucas sometimes, he's he's like Akira Toriyama. Yeah, no, his memory, say one his memory is horrible. He'll <laughs> say <laughs> one <laughs> thing and then he'll show us another thing. Because yeah. you can't show us Obi-Wan getting murdered and then just be like, yeah, this is supposed to be a kiddie adventure. Yeah. Also, when I thought about it, he blew up the Death Star. Like, Luke blew up the Death Star. You know how many personnel were on that thing? Like, <laughs> that's mass murder. Like when you think about it, that's mass murder, dog. Dog, like he he showed Princess Leia, like yo, I'm doing this now. And yeah. also, like we get to like the we get to the second one, right? Empire Strikes Back, and then Leia is in like this one piece bikini, 
in chains next to um uh, what's this next to what's his name what, why am i Jabba, forgetting Jabba the hat. there we go jabba the hat i was about to be like the guy who han solo owes money to or whatever <laughs> and i'm just like kid friendly this is ah I, I, I don't know anyway that looked like that looked like a a, a dream he had when he was 13 okay yeah, so now he can finally let's, fulfill it let's not forget something in the 1980s 1990s pg meant something else entirely 100%. no that's true do you remember <laughs> Indiana Jones, also George Lucas? Niggas skin for peeling off their faces. How is that PG, guys? Bro, Temple of Doom. <laughs> How is that no, voodoo actually, in it, bro? Actually, actually, if you guys remember the first Ghostbusters, when the yeah. ghost, like, it, like one of the ghosts, like the black Ghostbuster, apparently there was, like, a, a ghost that blows him or something. And I was like, wait, what? Oh, yeah. Well, the thing is, though, mm-hmm. if, if we're being actually, co- like, you're like right. the Ghostbuster went through a lot. Remember that train scene when, <laughs> when an entire train w- w- moved past him and he was, dog, he probably crapped his pants, dog. Because imagine seeing a train going past you. A train is long, dog. <laughs> and it's a ghost train. And you're still screaming the whole time. Oh, it's you're screaming the whole time. And don't forget, E.T. Hey, man. PG. Um, the Goonies was PG. Yeah. And there were some tense scenes there as well. There was, there's a lot yeah, of wild yeah. movies that are PG that if they came I'm, out, I'm yeah. Gremlins, I, Gremlins was I remember um, the, Gremlins, the, the Golden right. Child. Yeah. The Golden yes. Child, the Eddie Murphy Eddie movie. Murphy one, it was, yes. it was 13. There's boobs in there, dog. It was 13. <laughs> <laughs> there's yes. like uh, uh, Eddie's love interest. She shows the boobs. It was 13, dog. Yeah, was it was a, like, you, remember, you remember that scene 13. where 13. there was this, this, lady who has like a like a snake body or something or something like that yeah or like mm. like a like a mini dragon or something like that yeah and like how's this dragon. pg how's this pg how's this pg that thing was pg-13 i'm like dude there's boobs how is that pg-13 <laughs> but also going <laughs> like, back they to didn't this care, bro, man. Yeah. going back to this the, the the trailer doesn't really reveal much you don't even see, you barely see amanda steinberg some of it is quite dark you don't actually see what's happening you know, so it, you don't really, it doesn't really tell you much. I know it's the no, first No, but I mean, it just, it just, it just feels like. And I'm hating like... this, um. Oh, Sorry, go, go ahead, Vico. No, okay. you go ahead. I'm hating this thing of, um, they, they don't know how to use lighting anymore from what I'm seeing. They don't know what to do. So they make this, the scene dark and then you, you just see something and then like movement and you don't actually see clearly what's happening. So you also kind of assuming and because your brain is so powerful, it kind of puts the pieces for you together. Perhaps, yeah. right. But like um, the light is, is not used, light, light is not used very well. Uh, simple example, um, I'm the bad guy. You know by how I'm lit. Yeah. Like I'll be a little darker. It'll be sunny, but I will be in the shade or right. I'll wear a hat that will darken me. So you immediately your mind is like okay i need to watch out for this guy like we don't get those um those subtle clues anymore you know where someone does something and you just do a little eye shift when you know uh rob says yeah i need to go sell my book and then i do this and then it turns out i've been selling his book uh, at a at a lower price i've been stealing his stock and something like that you know Right. Like there's no like there's no subtlety anymore. Like everything is literally just we we, we are spoon fed, and even now with um, so a, as they say uh, on American Twitter, we are losing recipes, yeah. and I feel we are losing recipes in this because this could have in in the trailer everything's dark, so you don't know mm. who's, who's good, who? who's bad, and, right. and who and also it's not in the in the dark of in terms of like uh you half of me will be dark half of me will be good so i know that i am you know that this guy he's trying to do good or he's trying to do evil but he's got a bit of good in him or he's got a bit of evil in him type of thing you know so it's those it's those type of things in the like in the trailer i didn't see i don't know why the jedi are the enemy again like as well like the jedi look if I understand that um, as the ruler, you will not, you will never please everyone. So I'm not even going to blame the Jedi for being the enemy in this case, right. because when you rule someone, no matter how good your systems are, your systems will never please everyone. 
Uh, Buckmeister likes T'Challa. Um, Rob likes um, uh, Star Wars. You, you like Marvel. Uh, you like these. Like, right. I cannot please everyone. Yes. There's no way I can. So I understand you guys. Then I'm the ruler. I can understand now Buckmeister's mad at me because I'm putting too much money on Star Wars. I can understand uh, Rob is too mad at me because I'm giving too much attention to DC, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the fact that the Jedi are the bad guy again, I'm not stressed about that because when you are when you are in charge, you will always be the bad guy because you're always doing some someone wrong because right. you did it something good for someone you else. Please, you can't please everybody. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, so I have no problem. I have no problem with them being the bad guy. I do. I would like. I do hope that they make it clear why they're the bad guy. I don't want it to be just some like, oh no, um, they took my tea. You right. know, I don't want to do yeah, like some pathetic I mean, also, reason. But I'm saying, I think another thing that's a problem with this trailer is that I'm not sure who the main character is. Yeah. And yeah. Star Wars and, and these series have not been good at balancing characters. Like, Obi-Wan flopped because they tried to split the screen time between Obi-Wan and Reva. And it was just like, you should have given Reva her own show. And right. you know how mm. haunting it would have been for somebody who's committed so many atrocities to get one shot to try and kill Vader. And by the time they try, he just pones them. And now you just have to live with what you've done. Yeah, and right. basically, she can be a Jedi who has to atone for the fact that she was part of the Empire or something. Like, that would have been a great redemption story. But no, we have to sandwich it in with Obi-Wan. We have to try and tell two stories at the same time. And these stories are clashing. Like, yeah, it's right. not it's, working. It's like, it's and, like oh, with, okay. uh, with Ahsoka. Now, that's another like, issue that happens. Yeah. It's uh, too much is, is, is fed into, into like stories. Six episodes or something, yeah. It, n- n- never mind the episode length, just the story itself. Mm. Um, if the story is uh, Zuko uh, journeys to Centurion to go give um, Buckmeister his his thing, let that be the journey. Don't and obviously there'll be obstacles in my journey to getting uh, to getting the book to Buckmeister. But now don't make another story where when I'm going to Buckmeister then I need to also give a book to to Rob. And I also need to give um, my uh, collectibles to to Mr. Jordan. Like, that, that's the problem. Now, not too many things are happening. Right. I think it's also people. And that, 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 mm, so in, instead of from one story, let the thing branch. They have like three, four stories, and then they're trying to merge those stories. Instead of having the story, having the sto- uh, whatever alternative stories come from the singular story. I think it's more of an, an you know, okay, one of the reasons I like anime, right, is that um, Goku is the main character, and we follow Goku. We see Krillin and them and so and so, right, but you get Goku. Ichigo is the main character, to the point where I used to think it was a problem, but now when you see all these modern ensemble casts you start to realize no it's actually the smart way of doing things look at stranger things there's too many people in stranger things and they all have to try and give them something to do and it spreads too far and it ends up as a mess and over here Mm -hmm. this hasn't even started yet we haven't got to know anyone yet and there's already too many people doing too many things it's already a mess and what you i mean the thing is you can if like for if you set out like for example power rangers seem to do this okay when you set out to say or teenage mutant ninja turtles when you set out to Mm. say i mean yeah or x-men sometimes you know in in my opinion sometimes they mess it up but some but anyway i'm not an x-men fan so you you guys would know better but the point is if you're trying to do an ensemble right like for example avengers one right as much as we may not know like even if you just watch it solo dolo I feel you can still pick up who's who. Yeah. It, the the way the writers are weaving these stories in, they're not trying to make it a singular narrative or a singular goal for a group right. of people. Mm, right. They're trying to mm. make it that everybody's got diverging goals that don't make sense, but then they all have to be on the same journey. And, and it's we confusing. have to figure it out. We have to figure it out in the process because th- things are half written. For like each for character. example, Ahsoka, right? Ahsoka. The goal is supposed to be to stop Thrawn. But then this one wants to go find Ezra. Then this one wants to train this one, and then they, they have to go across the thing to find the other one. And then, then somewhere, Thrawn... Skull, 
Bellon Skull has his own thing, and then Shin Hati also has a has a subplot in there where she's trying to figure out who she is, whether she's a Sith or she's yes. a Jedi. And then or... there's the Green Captain of Commander, yeah. whoever Ooh, she oh, is. Oh wow! Okay, dog, like it's like it, it, it's like, it's all over the place. And I'm yeah. I'm looking at this trailer now. There's this guy who has to bring in this one who used to be his student. Then there's a problem with the Jedi. Then there's this new cult that's being formed, and then there's an issue with the Jedi are the bad. It's like, and then there's Vader, Vader Light or Vader or Zero. Venom Vader. <laughs> Venom Vader. Yeah. Because yeah. like smile, the Venom smile, it's Venom Vader, dog. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and now he's running Venom around and, and, and then everybody's like, who are you? So now we have to learn about this new guy. And it's like, That's... guys, 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 you are. Right. Too That's many stuff. stories. Too many stories. It's just too many stories because... Um, let's say from the Isoka one, they need to go and kill this person. Now, if on this journey, this person is getting, trying to figure out if there's certain thing on the journey, mm. if this person is, I need to train this person on the journey, like the this first person needs to do on the journey, like if the first everything is on the journey, like, yeah. um, you know, we get to town A and this right. guy says like, I need to stay because I need to train this, I will catch up with you guys. So it's still on the journey, but we know now why he needs to stay, because he needs to fix his evil, or his evil or his good side, whatever, but he will catch up to them. So as they travel, this one now um, is, uh, gets whatever their problem is, and then boom, maybe they run in, into the next town, then they run into like, oh, I remember I betrayed this guy, so this is what the problem is, and that's the little conflict that happens, and then that... That's why that ensemble costs work when people aren't too far away from the main character so that we can, because the main character will carry the journey. Mm -hmm. And then also when their stories are helping to push the main character forward. But however, when now the stories are pushing the character but are doing nothing to the main character, that's when we start losing interest. Because mm -hmm. um, right. if I bring a book to, to Rob, then this is the book that's going to help him write the this thing that he's been stuck with. So now I'm helping, I'm a, I'm a side character in Rob's story. However, my journey in me getting to Rob has now helped Rob on his journey. So now the story is flowing. Right. So, yeah. yeah, I just want to add another element to that, because I think you're right. I think you could almost call it the Game of Thrones problem. So I feel like Game of Thrones did it so well that now everyone's trying to copy it in a way, and now it's coming off as ugly. But I want to talk about something else, actually. Um, but involving what you mentioned about lighting and color and stuff like that, I want to just, I think, remember, sound and color tell the story as well, and it's kind of incredible that we kind of talk about this. Like, right. if you look at the image right now, did I put it up? Did you see yes. it? Yeah. Yes, yeah, we can see it. It's brown on maroon on dark yellow. It's, it's horrifying. It's, this is like one image in a way, do you know what I mean? It's blend. It's too blended. Right. Like, I think yeah. that's the mistake they're making. And like, um, like you said, dark. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? This is all dark. Mm. That, like, brown on brown on brown on yellow on yellow on brown. Like, do you get what I'm saying? Mm. Mm. Like, it's, it's, it's monochromatic. It's Mm. Yeah. Right, right, right. Like the only point of interest seems to be the saber. And I guess that's, a, that's not a bad idea, but... I'm uh, saying, I guess it's not a bad idea, but like at the same time, if if it's happening too often, yeah, then that's when it starts to feel like a, a whole blur. Like right. if there's not enough contrast or whatever. Yeah. Like, and also, do you remember when colors used to represent um, themes or sounds? Yes. Yeah. Themes? Yes. Right. Like, oh, Jack the Ripper is here, or like the the shark from Jaws is here. Du -du 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 -du. Dun -dun. You know what I mean. Right. No, I mean, yeah, Vader's the uh, thingy. Dun 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 dun. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Thank you very much. much. There we go. No, but okay. like also just just to go back to what you were saying earlier about how it was a Game of Thrones thing. Like I don't like Game of Thrones personally, just because I think it, it it was a lot and like it's very cynical and I'm not I don't enjoy cynical entertainment. But anyway. Oh, like dark. No, not really. Especially when it's dark for dark sakes, because some stuff happens in there and it's just like, that was unnecessary, and you know it. But anyway. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I, I just think as a whole, one of the reasons why it worked is because there was the singular goal of the throne. Like, right. whatever anybody did in there, it was related to the throne. 
the reason why exactly. they kind of lost the plot in season eight is because now somebody has the throne that's supposed like they have the throne now and they don't know what to do with it like they don't know where they're going with it so now it's just right. uh crazy let's torch the town yeah, and she drank she got yeah. drunk and that was all she did yeah. yeah, basically. But I'm saying up until season six, everybody is either vying for this thing or is related to this thing or like are dealing with consequences because yeah. of this thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're trying to help someone get it. You're trying to prevent someone to, to, to get it. You are trying to run away from it because it's harming you. Like something is happening because of the goal. Mm. And here fun. I don't see where I don't see where we're going. I don't and I'm just saying with Star Wars in general, I don't understand where this franchise is gonna be. Like I don't understand like now they're gonna make a Mandalorian movie. And I'm like a, a whole movie on Grogu and Jinjarin, are we sure? Yeah, because, who wants to watch that? And oh, I'm saying I like he doesn't have the three. pull and I'm saying he doesn't have the pull that he had anymore. Like because people aren't like Season yeah, so it's a hate crime. Yeah, uh, is um, it? Because I enjoyed season one and two. I'm not yeah, gonna. Yeah, find. I'm saying like that was some great stuff, but it, like yeah. the thing is, like season one and two, it felt like we were going somewhere, and I right. think that's the thing. Star Wars, it feels like they're spinning their wheels so hard, and it's just like I've not seen any progression with this franchise whatsoever because they keep wanting to hold on to old imagery that nobody needs anymore. Like, mm, mm. for example, I'm very sick of the whole motif of one one Jedi per per trilogy. Right. It's, like, it's, it's, yeah. it's like you guys had a whole council at some stage. You mean to tell me there's nobody else in the right. universe that can right. use this thing? Right. Nobody. You have to be a Palpatine. You have to be you a have Skywalker. To be o- you have to be... Obi-Wan. That's it. Like, and, and... there's nobody else. And then also it's just like, I feel like, for me personally, like the what, like the I, the appeal of Thrawn. I feel like they should be a villain in the universe that is just like all this force needs stuff needs to stop. Right. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. No, no problem. But I'm saying like there needs to be a villain that's like all this force stuff needs to stop. Like, eh, they, 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 they shutting it all down, killing all force users, and then we get to see like you know it's a classic '80s, '90s, you know, 2000s that's trope. Crazy. The enemy of my enemy. Like, do something like crazy. that. Like. Right. Like, you know, switch it up. Like, if you want to do evil, bring some new evil. Bring in some new type of evil. Like, you know, bring in somebody that's, like, anti the Force or whatever, since, like, the Force is the the, the cause of all the problems in the universe, by the way. (laughs) The beyond and and all, yes. That's what sisters are about. They're, like, they're witches. So they're supposed to be an alternative to the Force. That was what they were trying to do. But now, instead of that, we're getting zombies. And it's like, I don't think I want zombies in Star Wars. I don't know about you. Oh, guys. yeah. The no, one they were boring. They have the right? Walking Dead. No, like, I'm saying they, the like, dead. the thing is, the, the dead. It's a, the, we don't need it in Star Wars. Yeah. yeah, but I'm saying, like, the thing is, it's not a bad idea, in my opinion. It's just that it was so boring to watch. Like, they didn't do anything interesting with it. Right. Like, it was like, oh, the, 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 the stormtroopers are zombies, and then that's it. And they don't yeah. even do anything zombie with it at all. And, like, the, the choreographing is boring. See, that's and, the thing, though. The, the zombie, the sorry, uh, the movie, the Mandalorian movie is actually going to be the Thrawn movie, basically. That's what I understand. Uh, it's not going to be yeah. Mandalorian the movie. It's going to be Thrawn the movie. And then everyone's supposed to come together and then fight Thrawn. Actually, Pila called this last year. <laughs> if you remember Bug my stuff, Pila yeah. called exactly this. He yep. said that's exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> yep. And but anyway, why, guys, uh, I think we can uh, just anyway. wrap it up. I don't know if you guys yeah. have final thoughts, but... Yeah, it's look, not, there's anyway. not much to the trailer. Uh, we didn't really see much. We don't. I didn't even see Amanda Steinberg in it. I think it's just a silhouette she, of her. She, she's the, oh, she's no, the she's, assassin. She's the, she's she's the assassin. Oh, oh she's, she's the, the one assassin. with the knives. She's, she's the, the one with the oh, knives. Okay. Which yeah, also, I'm just like, that's stupid to me because if I have the force and you throw something at me, it's just zoom. Yeah. And and <laughs> like, how are you assassinating me with you. knives? Like, you got unless a knife if, at me. Unless if she was using the, fo- the, the knives with the force or something. No, maybe. but even so, uh, no, I'm, maybe, I got maybe it's the force. An, maybe it's anti-force knives. We don't know. Maybe it's anti-force I, knives. You know, stupidest thing in the world if that happens. I will be shaking <laughs> to an angle. Because you have to there's a reason why um, Jedi don't use the force against each other. There's actually lore about this where um, they're all they're all at such a high level that they can't really do that to each other. Which is why whenever you see them fight, they always go like, like you know what I mean, like. Whenever they try to use it against each other, like, you know what I mean? Like, you can't throw a lightsaber at a force guy because 
it gets done. It's, mm. like, that it's like they repel. Huh? So they repel each other. Like basically, it's like automatic. Do you know what oh, I mean? Oh, okay. So it's like, mm. it's like, also, yeah. here's another thing. If the Jedi has this tumultuous history, it starts making the Anakin situation look even more stupid. Because it's just like, if you guys know that you have a history of being problematic in the universe, maybe you should do something about your organization such that you don't bring up problems in the universe. Yes! Yes! Exactly. It's like the joke I make about the Rings of Power. Okay, right. if the Rings of Power is so diverse, does that mean that there was a genocide in between Rings of Power and Lord clearly, of the Rings? Clearly, clearly. <laughs> was because, there a genocide? <laughs> because all the black guys are gone. <laughs> black dwarves are gone, black elves are gone, black soldiers are gone. What happened? Every black, anything black. Jay, everything black must go. <laughs> so it's because, just like when they Because keep... black genocide, everything black must go. Black Friday of black things. <laughs> Yes. Like, 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 so when they keep doing these retroactive prequels and like they're not looking at the material anymore, it's just like, I don't know how you're going to justify this because now it makes them look so incompetent when they created Darth Vader. Yes. <laughs> yes. Mm. Darth. And that's, and that goes back to the other problem of people not, uh, and, and reading the law, understanding the law, everything. Simple thing. Uh, the reason Game of Thrones season one to six mm-hmm. was so good is because they were working from the books. books yeah. So from seven and eight, they were working. They were they had to now come up with the thing, but <laughs> you can clearly see they could, they didn't understand the story that they were telling. Exactly. So Actually, they just yeah. so even with um, um, Martin consulting, they they were just because now. They didn't have the template. They had to make, they had to create the template yeah. themselves. Which reminds me, did you guys actually see the clip? I'm sure you guys have seen it. That, that clip of like the, of all these MCU directors basically saying they oh, know nothing yep. about the law. Yep. Like, wow. Yep. yep. Yeah. The yep. guy who yep. wrote Black Panther, the guy who wrote Black Panther was yes. just like, T'Challa is too OP. I don't know how to challenge him. We're not sure what to do. So we just got to, we had to write the movie the way we wrote it. And I'm like, yeah, that doesn't make T'Challa sense. has so many challenges. Yo, yo. And then okay, also the guy who uh, did, sh- no, but anyway, point yeah. being, last to wrap it up, I don't know if this is, I don't know if I'm going to watch this unless we're reviewing it, Kim. You got to let me mm. know. But otherwise, I have zero interest in like the Star Wars universe right. personally. Yeah. Look, the only thing I, that's I'm, I'm saying with Buckmeister, interested... if you're not reviewing it, I'm not interested. It can it it can go to the nearest uh, sewage. Okay, Rob. Um, I'm going to watch it because I'm a Star Wars fan, but I'm probably gonna hate it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Look, like, and then you're thing, gonna hate the yourself. Two... The yes. only two, two people that are making me really want to be interested in watching it is Carrie Ann Moss, because I'm a huge Carrie Ann Moss fan, and also uh, the guy from Squid Games. That's all. But yeah. we'll see how that goes. Yeah. All right, guys. I'm obsessed all with right. Trinity, and I don't want to watch this. That's I'm obsessed. <laughs> Enough said, man. I'll, go, right, back to, I'll so, go back to Matrix. It's fine. <laughs> what yeah, are your true. thoughts about Star Wars Aqualite? Do let us know your thoughts in the uh, comments down below. Uh, and yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks. Uh, let us know. Let us know. Let us know. Do you agree with us? Are you going to watch it? Do you think we're talking nonsense? Do you agree with everything we said? Do you want to add anything? Let us know in the comments. All right. Now we're going to be talking about uh, the new Superman suit. Okay. So James Gunn has revealed, like, he, he, he broke the internet, right, for a few days. So basically, in, he revealed. And in, in, in not, not in the way he wanted. Yeah. Probably not, yes. But um, let's just, just give me a second. Let me share my screen quickly. But basically, on Twitter, he revealed the new Superman look. Okay, maybe just to give people can context. I, while you're doing that, can I just start? Yeah. First of all, that's a horrible picture. Yeah. That is a horrible picture to I'm be revealing something. Okay, wait, just to give people, I just want to give people context quickly. Yeah, so that's David what I'm Consuet, saying. While you... Yeah, David Consuet is the guy that's that has the role of Superman now. That's how it looks like. How do you say his name? That's a Corin thin sweat. Neck, Corin That's sweat. A thin neck. Oh wow. wow. Yeah, Corin sweat. But Rob, even if you're speaking about his thin neck, he's been hitting the gym real hard. Like I this is one of the dark. this Let's is one see. of the pictures that came out recently, and this one as well. Okay, that okay. You see, that's a better neck right there. There we go. Okay, <laughs> at least. Right. Okay. He's on that. He's on that. He's on that superhero diet, my guy. Better. Like, oh the yeah. Thing that, is, that the thing is, these diet. guys. 
<laughs> no, I'm saying the thing is, these guys get diet. no, like the thing, these yeah. guys get told. I'm saying these guys get told, hey, your paycheck depends on this chief. So yeah, yeah they gotta live in the gym there. Yes. Yeah, the rice and chicken uh, diet. Yeah, that so is, yeah, I just want to show you guys from yeah. from deadline. This is the photo that uh, they they showed us. Okay, maybe let me it's show this so one. So weird. That's a horrible picture. It's a it's, horrible. It's it's bad. And here's why it's bad. One, uh-huh. if that's Brainiac on the outside, right, why is right, Superman? Right, purple equals Brainiac, right? Yeah. Why is Superman putting his boots on one at a time? <laughs> like people like, are dying down like there. Like you're super fast, bro. Can't you just? <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I'm saying, like, to me, it's the whole Justice League, um, that last episode where Darkseid comes in and Superman gives the speech about how the world is made of paper cardboard, and I, yeah. yeah, cardboard and I feel what, what, and then he, and then he super punches Darkseid. And I'm just like, if I was in the Justice League, I would have been looking at him like, Mona, you could have done this the entire time. Right. The right. End- We're fighting how many parademons and you could have done this. And okay. you want to give a speech and do it now. When we're in the middle of the fight and the city is almost destroyed, now you want to take out your full power. Right. Now, yeah. And this uh, is Rob- dark side. Anyway. What, what do you think? He doesn't need to hold back. Why are you holding back, bro? Yeah, the invincible problem. That's what I call it. Um, yeah, so I- anyway, as I was saying, so one, the, um, the, uh, the Cavill suit... It looked very futuristic. This right. one looks yeah. a little old school. Give me a second. The Cavill suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there we go. Yeah, the Cavill suit mm-hmm. looks futuristic. This one looks old school. So it's like we're going now to back to Christopher Reeves, okay? That was okay, intentional, fine. by the way, because James Gunn wanted to make this new version of Superman slightly a bit but lighter it, it, than it the... Feels, the but it feels version. so boxy, Okay, though, like... fine. Yes, it's too dense. That's fine. Some, this is some the strong blue, starch. Right the blue here. isn't bluing. The blue isn't bluing. Right. Also, that's the one. other thing. Yeah. And then also, why is his S also a bit purple? What's going on? Why is the blue? Okay, so the why no, is the, it costume, the, 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 light. Co- the costume looks like it, it is beat up a bit. It seems like he was fighting. If you look at it, it looks a bit oh, damaged. Yeah. There's like battle okay. damage on it. So that okay, means fine. the rule is over. And then the angle of the picture, the, 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 the framing of the picture, like, ugh. <laughs> Just, no, I'm just saying, like, I, I feel like... like... The, I, okay, um, sorry, before... I'm, I'm, I'm going to be done after this. I think the suit, I don't really have... Besides the color, that's really my biggest color. The picture is my, my, my main problem with this. The picture is, is horrible. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's like, putting, it's like Batman putting on his cowl but yeah, when Joker is out there shooting up the city. I mean, right. even though that makes more sense, you'd just be like, Bruce, you'd probably be out there already. I don't understand, like, if the supervillain is by your window. Yeah, the dead no. Look, no, I mean, dead guys, remember, part of the, the characters oh. that are going to be in, involved in this movie or included in this movie, you're going to have Hot Girl, you're going to have Mr. Terrific, you're going to have Green Lantern. Um, so maybe they are out there trying to save the, the city as well while he's also but like why would he be last like I feel like Superman should be first on the scene especially given his power set like if I I'm Mr. You. Terrific the first thing I'd do after this battle is I'd grab the uh, handful of kryptonite and I'd punch you square in your nose because you're supposed to show like first off this is your guy one I don't know why I'm responsible Two, I'm a regular man with just ingenious and intelligence. Right. When are you want to put on your boots one at a time and come help us when it's late? Like, but no, you got you got I, mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm seeing things, but he does look like he was fighting and he does look like he's exhausted. Here's what yeah, happened. but I just think in general it's a bad picture. Anyway, sorry, Rob. No, no problem. He was fighting, and then what happened was his shoes got dirty, so he got a new <laughs> shoes. That's why they're the only clean things in the shot. Everything else is dirty. Shoes are fresh. This man is a nigger, dog. This is the most gangster thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, this is the most that that's the most black thing ever. My, where like uh, you, my, my air forces my, get your your white Krypton air forces ones. get creased, so you gotta go back. Cause yeah, like, oh my, my foot, the, the, the my not dripping anymore. Exactly, space force ones. Oh <laughs> okay, my god. Yeah, there's just a few things that I just want to mention from my end. So you do see like he has the collar, which is like uh, maybe it's an homage to the new Fifty Two version of Superman. Um, maybe let me just share it quickly. So that people know what we're talking yeah, about. it's a very amalgamated suit, I think. No, no, it definitely I, is. Because I even is. see the trunks. I even see the trunks are there. 
Yes, so New 52 version Superman, as you can see there, there is a, um, a collar of sorts. And then uh, the S is from the Kingdom Come version of, if you look at it, that S, the way it looks like, it looks like the Kingdom Come version. Um, mm -hmm. And then the blue, Maybe. it's not too bright, but it's not too dark. It's not too Henry, it's not the darkness of Henry Cavill, but it's not the lightness of Christopher yeah. Reeves. Yeah, it's an in-betweener. But the other thing that I wanted us to just talk, please bear with me, guys. I just want to show you guys something. Just the history of the Superman suits in the so the the first live action actor that we had, right? His name was Kirk Allen. <laughs> and this is how the suit, <laughs> oh, this is how the suit looked like back then. I think this is in the 1940s. Yeah. Right? As okay. you can see. That's and then we suits. then we have uh, George Reeves. I think you guys are familiar with George Reeves. He was a huge Superman TV star. Uh, he even appeared in I Love Lucy. Uh, as you can yeah. see, this guy was not buff at all. Like, even if you see, like, look at him. Look at his neck are wild, though. I mean, that, look, at that, look at that jawline, dog. Yeah, yeah. The jawline, apparently it makes what, up for what, it. What's where I uh, be saying a uh, Derek Square jaw? The American uh, jawline. What's his yeah, name? Yeah. Rich from Days of Our Forest. <laughs> rich. rich Forest. Uh, yeah, yeah, the Rich, the rich jawline. Oh, from the bowl. Yeah. Oh, so so by the so way, weird. that's it's a so that's weird. an American trope, eh? Uh, the like, jaw thing. If you look at yeah. it back in the day, if you look at all the action heroes back in the day, they all had a strong jawline because that was yes. heroic. The, um, yes. the um, the symbol of heroism in America was a strong jawline. So right. that's why Superman also has such a yeah. in the cartoons. That's why his jawline is so like you could like you know break something on that jawline yeah, so that's saying, why that, that's probably why george reeves also besides his acting and everything else one yeah. of the reasons he got it was his jawline because it was so pronounced and so strong and you know that like his death people still don't know how he died to this day he basically is the reason why there's a superman curse to this day because people don't know what happened to him right but anyway oh. then we have christopher reeves they are not related by the way <laughs> right but That's he's christopher crazy. reeve and he's george reeves but anyway this is the suit that christopher reeves has uh you see the blue is quite i mean he's also kind of lean he was also kind of lean i mean he was more muscular yeah. than george but he was also kind of lean because he did yeah he's, he's lean yeah, he lifted he lifted weights yeah, for the role. Neck, dog. it's like the size of his head dog it's a straight line yeah this is how he was. But I mean, like, the Reeves was so iconic that he redefined. Uh, well, sorry, this uh, got something in my throat. Recast each other. <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> George, I mean, Christopher Reeves was so good that he actually redefined, like, the Superman mythos forever. 100%. Because, for example, that whole Crystal Cave thing, that's from this movie. The whole uh, the duality. Fortress of Solitude. Yeah, Fortress of Solitude. It wasn't a thing from what I remember from the from the comic books I read until this was happening. Oh, we give I Joe think. Plus credit for that though. Um, Francis I, Coppola, I believe he's involved in the. I, I think he made this movie. If I'm correct. No, no, it's not no. Francis. Uh, it's well, not. Mario, Pu Mario Puzo was involved in this for yes. for a bit, but then they didn't like his script. And then ah. Richard Donner, Richard Donner, the guy who directed yeah. Little yes. Weapon. Lethal Weapon 1, 2, 3, and 4, I think. Yes. He's the one that directed this movie. Okay. Yeah. But then Marlon, Marlon Brando played uh, Jor-El, the guy's father. So maybe Francis Ford Coppola might have been involved somewhere, somehow, Some, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. But, but I also I know, know that um, once this, uh, I mean, the Fortress of Solitude thing, I'm pretty sure I think it comes from here. I'm okay. uh, Again, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. And I also know the duality of Clark Kent and Superman. Yeah, he, he it comes from it. Yeah, it comes yeah. from Christopher Reeves. Yeah. Because Christopher because, Reeves because was just like... Other, if you look at other iterations of, of Clark, like even, even in the cartoons, Clark is not that different from Superman. But Christopher Reeves actually really made it distinct. He made them distinct from each yeah. other. You're absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely right about no, that. No, like, yeah, after this, that's when, like, when Superman, the animated series came in and all, and they did that stuff as well, where Clark would play up that he's clumsy at work, and then right. when he's, you know, what's this, and he would, like, be unassuming and all of that stuff. Yeah, that would, a lot of that stuff was Reeve. Yeah, it's the, the thing, same way with, imagine like, Batman. that's such a buff dude being clumsy, with, though. It was like, in the, like but the, it happens, the, the, the buff Clark. Yeah. yeah. Like, such a buff dude being clumsy. Yo, that's how... 
<laughs> okay. I mean, also, it's like Kevin Conroy with Batman because Batman and the duality thing, um, it was always like prevalent as a theme. Yes. But because he would change his voice when he was voice acting, right. then everybody ran with it that, oh, who's the mask, who's this, who's yes. that? And he just did it as an acting Sense. choice. Yes. Sense. But, but, but also Michael Keaton did it first, though. We need to give Michael Keaton his flowers because uh, Michael Keaton did it in 1989, I think. Then, no, uh, Kevin he wasn't. Uh, no, if I look at his performance, he didn't. The, it like, was subtle. But he did it first. Subtle, maybe, but I'm saying the thing is, when Kevin Conroy did it, there was a big visible difference. 100%. Like you would see it in his delivery and yeah. also the way they would draw it, but you'd see it especially in his delivery. Yeah. Like he would do, he would play up to the Playboy like yeah. thing when he was, and then when he switched to Batman, you'd hear this like gruff deep. or whatever the deep thing. Right. So, like with Michael Keaton, when I watched it, I didn't feel a difference between his Batman and his Bruce Wayne. Mm. I just felt like Kevin Conroy was the one who defied. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. But yeah, getting back to yeah, Christopher Reeves. Yeah, that whole duality thing that comes from him. Right. And then uh, we have Dean Kane. He did the uh, the TV version of uh, uh, Superman. Lewis Adventures. Of, uh, see how uh, that blue is popping, man. That blue is popping. That, that yeah, was, he's the he's the most unpopular. He's the most unpopular Superman right I, now. Okay, SBC two. What's it? Five o'clock every day. Yeah, yeah I grew up. Too. I grew up with this suit. He yeah, was my Superman. Man, I knew. Yeah. This is this is this is, a, this is how I discovered Superman before yes. the movies, and then the movies and his would perform- play. His performance was amazing, guys. We have to give yeah. it up to him. Like mm-hmm. honestly speaking. Fact, I mean, I haven't watched it. I haven't watched it. I mean, interestingly enough, I saw Christopher Reeve Superman first. Okay. And then somehow I skipped this one and I went to the 90s animated series. Like, that's how I ingested Superman. And, and I think he was the first to do the black suit thing, if you remember, no? Because uh, the black suit was introduced in the 90s after the death of Superman. And this came out in the 90s. So he yeah. was the first to, to don the, mm. the exactly. black suit. Actually, you know what's interesting? Like, mm-hmm. how, how if you go back to that old picture, I mean, of the new picture of him, uh, of Superman... With the whole dirt on his suit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just give me a second. Yeah, yeah. If you remember in Lois and Clark, there was... Yeah. A, that's what I was talking about, the two-centimeter rule. Where um, there's a scene where, like, someone shoots up Lois and Clark's house. Mm-hmm. And then when they go to the secret drawer where all Superman's suits are, there's bullet holes in them. And we discover that, oh, no, Superman has a layer of protection around him that covers it, which is why he's not naked all the time. Right. Like, that was the first time I ever discovered that. That's why I'm almost surprised this nigga's dirty at all. Uh, do you know what I mean? Like, oh, right. Oh, remember, uh, that, okay. remember that rule? I don't oh, remember. Oh, basically, it's like the telekinesis layer that allows him to pick up like planes and fly through buildings without like destroying them and, exactly. and all of that stuff. It's supposed yeah. to be like, yeah, it's supposed to be like, because. I mean, you know, famous scene in The Boys where Homelander says he has no footing, so if he tries to grab the plate, which, I mean, I feel like, you know, that's just He just didn't want to do it. Homelander yeah. just didn't want to say Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, dog, you could have done something. Like, even yeah. if you broke it apart or, like, yeah. yeah. What? Anyway, that's the point yeah, of he it. He doesn't anyway, care. The whole okay, point so, is that, then, it, yeah. And then we have Brendan Routh. Um, he played Superman in Ooh, 2006. Yeah. I think. He was done yeah. dirty, Shay, man. He was. No, he dirty. was. He's also the same version as um, Christopher Reeve Superman. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So basically, what Brian Singer did, he's, he ignored Superman 3 and 4 and said, okay, this, is, this movie happens after Superman 2. <laughs> so that's, that's what happened, basically, with this movie. Hey, maybe they'll do that for Black Panther. They'll ignore Black Panther 2 and then just carry on with the. Oh. <laughs> But this, 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 this red, I just want to say this red is a bit darker than the, the, the rest of them. And mm. uh, it makes sense. It's, post- it's, it's not a, it's, it's, I mean, it's not a bad suit, but like, yeah, it is very, well, I'm saying like the contrast, I think is too much. Like, I think mm. the, the blue is too bright and the, right. the red is too dark. He was a good mm. Superman from what I remember. I just remember the movie was mid. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It, it it had its moments, especially his his clockisms. I, I enjoyed his clockisms. Also, it was just like, dog, did you shop at this guy with a stinner where you gave Lois a, a son and then just went off into space and then she and like and Lois, did you not tell this? Did you not tell this guy that is in your house that you are married to that you had a son with Superman? Dude. Like, yeah, like you're, uh, what's but anyway, 
He's the yeah, same so actor that plays Which one is the handball? I can't... What, wait, wait. What yeah, is the handball? James Marsden. Dude... James Marsden. That's the actor. I'm name. saying James Marsden just did not have luck with superheroes at some point because he was getting shot out with a stinner by Wolverine. Dog, now he's getting just... shot out with a stinner by Superman. Dog, <laughs> it was not just superheroes. Even in the notebook, dog, he was the other guy. Like, it's just... <laughs> but anyway... I think so it's he... one of those... I think it's him and um, the dude from... Uh, damn it. It. I, I remember his name, but there's this, this guy. He's like all in all his movies, like okay, like like seventy percent of his movies, he's always losing the girl. The Notebook. He even lost his girl in the Notebook as well. Yeah, that's him. That's the girl we're talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. No, I was trying to remember the other guy who also has the the same luck. But uh-huh. um, this one, he in the Notebook, he also lost his girl yep. to to Ryan Gosling. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so Brandon Roth came back with the Kingdom Come S. That's why I was saying it's similar to this S. If you look at the shape, it's yeah. similar to that S. Um, so yeah. yeah, so um, this one for me looks a bit better than the Superman Returns yeah. suit. Yeah, yeah, it does. It yeah, it does. It does. I think this guy's movie came out at the bad time because you have to remember mm. 2026, and then right. Dark Knight was 2028, and Iron Man was 2028. Like mm. and. And um, I mean, 2008, yeah. Sorry, not dark, yeah. And then Batman was. Am I freezing, guys? I thought I'm, I'm the I one that's freezing. That was style of... I think Rob oh. is freezing. Sorry, yeah, please Rob, repeat that, Rob. You say? Rob? Rob, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Back. Yes. Yeah, you're back. No, now, I was yeah. saying, I was saying we were done with his style of movies when his movie came out. His movie oh, came out like yes. five. Years. Right. Because right. Iron Man already was 2028. Dark Knight was 2028. Was 2008, 2008, and then 2006. For, um, and then uh, what's it? Batman Returns was already. Uh, then the no, Schumacher Bat- one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was the 90s, and then I know Batman Begins is 2005. Yeah. Yes. So, so it came a year yeah. before it came be yeah, a year before this one came out. Yeah. Yes. We were done with his style of movies. And that oh, was I, I, I mean it was the style, yes, but I think also just the, the like the plot was weird because like Lex Luthor made a whole island of kryptonite and he was gonna sell it as real estate and it was just yeah, like Yeah, that story didn't that, that story was not good. It was not good. And was not really like good. nobody was trying to stop him. Like the no, because like remember like, the oh. other thing is like the other thing is like when we go to oh, oh, the OG Superman movie with Christopher Reeves, when we yeah. look at that plot, like Lex Luthor's plan kind of made sense. Yeah, you know, I yeah. mean, outside of outside of Superman just saying I'm going to reverse time by flying around the world really fast, which you know, yeah. I don't know how that works. It's but a good point for sure. Yeah, but the point being yeah. is, like, I think that most of that movie, plot-wise, you can understand it. That's why it's, like, it's sort of rewatchable, even if we're watching it with 70s effects or whatever. Ah, but right. we forgive bad movies all the time. Do you know what I mean? Like, we still give good yeah. bad movies, especially superhero stuff. Mm. But this one, no one was feeling it, man. Yeah. Anyway, and but then we have to... Because move, the, if the story to... is bad, we... If the story is good... We can forgive bad CGI, bad this, bad that. But if the story is terrible, and then the CGI is terrible, terrible. or whatever. No, I think the no, CGI was saying, good. I, yeah, but I'm saying like I'm as just Rico saying says, like in general, yeah. the story will hold it together. If the don't like, I think too many times these a lot of these new directors they depending on the uh, the, the the CGI and the action sequence to keep people, and then they have a mid story. Unless it's a Jason Statham movie, like I don't, I don't. That's yeah, the only time I don't care no, about your story. Oh, no, you're, you're absolutely right. Back in no, the and, day, and it seemed like they, they focused more on the they focused more on the writing than the special effects because they knew that mm. the spe- special effects were crap. But now that the special effects have improved, it's as if they didn't they don't focus more on the writing anymore, which is sad. Yeah, but I'm it's saying, like, like sometimes like they don't focus like, at all. Like sometimes Jason Statham will take a car in the transporter and he'll make it backflip to like hook yeah. a bomb on a thing, and I'm just like, ah, okay. We all do this. I think that's why they included him in in the uh, Fast and Furious. He was the Fast and Furious before the Fast and Furious, so they, they had to include him in there. But anyway, well, he, mm-hmm. like yeah, but anyway, modern Fast and Furious. But uh, getting back to um, Tom Welling, yeah. Yeah, 
yeah so we have tom willing he was uh, the star in uh, smallville we didn't really see much of the suit because he used to wear a jacket. We didn't see it at all. Yeah, we used to, he used to wear a we jacket. Saw it once the, in the last was, 30 seconds after 10 years. Exactly. So, like, this was the weird era where people would wear the colors of the superheroes, but yes. they wouldn't wear the superhero suits. Because, yeah, you know mm. why? Al- Alfred Gore and Miles Miller did that deliberately. They had a rule when they wrote the show. They said, no flight, no tights. That was their rule, right? Yeah. Um, so, but then they broke it in season four because in season four, uh, Clark was flying because he was exposed to red kryptonite, I think. Um, but then, not red, I think it was, was it red? I don't remember. But then here, um, you see that this is at the end, I think, where he's just revealing that he's Superman. I mean, That's it looks it. cheap. That's it looks see. like a t-shirt print. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? He's, it like... dog. he's a farm boy. He doesn't have a budget for a letter. <laughs> right. <laughs> But there's not much to say here, so we're just gonna leave it as is. I mean, th- what can I you say? I did love the jacket, though. Go, this. go to the jacket. Go to the jacket. The um, Mr. X. The jacket was was boss. That's mm. fine. Yeah, that's nice though. That's yeah. was that my jacket was, was fire. Superman. Like no one killed people. No one left a body count like the Superman dog. Remember season one and two, Superman? With yeah, no, he he he, he killed was... he killed people though. Like no, Bug Boy, he... didn't Bug Boy die or something? I believe so, but all I'm saying is every episode there was a kryptonite guy. There was like some superhero, right? Yeah, some a meteor freak. Guy. Yeah. And then at the end yeah, of meteor it, freak. no one's alive, dog. No one's alive. Is it a coincidence? 30 different times? Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. You're supposed then, to be uh, saving people, bro. Dog. And then and then and then we have Tyler. Well, okay, okay, before we get to Tyler, maybe let's just say Henry Cavill first. Yeah, I think so, we have to say Henry first, yeah. Yeah, yeah well it's Cavill first. Cavill, Kevil didn't have the the trunks, the red trunks, which was good, I yeah. think. Yeah. I think he was. He wasn't underpaid. He was done dirty, man. Mm, no, the true. thing is, he's he's uh, when you watch that movie, right? He can give you the Superman that people wanted. It's yeah. just that Zach couldn't write the Superman that people wanted. Because but I also I, think I also think it was because it was after that whole Dark Knight trilogy. So he thought that if he was to make Superman dark as much as uh, they made Batman and dark, Superman is work. not dark. Yeah, yeah Superman is basic, no. But I'm saying basic, the other thing Superman is, the is movie, sunshine and roses. Yeah, no, but I'm saying like the movie itself is just uneven. When we look at the way it's written, like there's Superman is inconsistent in that movie, and I think that's what hurts a lot of his performance. Right, because yes. like we go but that's from Zack Snyder. I mean, if you need, yeah, I'm if saying every he... movie you make needs an extended cut. Maybe you know you're not that good <laughs> yeah. of a director to begin with. Yeah, right. because I'm saying like if we if we go like if we go in Man of Steel, we go from the fight in Smallville to the fight in Metropolis. Mm-hmm. It's like two different Supermen. Mm. Oh, yeah. touch my mother. No, but I'm and not even talking team. about that. I'm talking about the fact that he's saving people in Smallville when he's fighting four Kryptonians at the same time. But then when it's a one-on-one with Zod, he's like posing as Zod throws tanks filled with gas at him and he's like ramming Zod into buildings. And it's just like, who yeah, is this guy? The, yeah, Smallville, the like... Smallville fight is a lot better than the 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 last, uh, the third act fight. You're right. Then the dubstep mm. fight, Yes. The dubstep fight. Yes, when he has to fight the power of dubstep. <laughs> okay, and then we have the last one. Uh, Tyler, I don't know how to spell this in him. Uh, I think it's Hochelin. 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 I think it's Hochelin. Bless you. Yeah, and this is his. I mean, there was this one from. <laughs> there was this one from. There was this one from um, Supergirl. I didn't like it that much, to be honest. Eh, it's not that bad, but you know. There, but the one in there's one in the series here at the beginning when yes, he's this, her, this one, when he the saves one in the, the car, middle. yeah. This, this he... one was basically an homage to Atlas Comics, the very first uh, Superman uh, comic that came out where he was holding a car, that green car. That's why they even did it like that. Um, but then, this is I guess this is from the series. Mm. Yeah, I think this is my favorite one so far. Like he's a very underrated Superman, and I'm not. I don't like Superman at all. And I yep. low-key enjoyed this series. I didn't finish it, I'm though. En- I love the series. I've actually finished it. Why does this shirt look like a print? Why does the S look like it's been printed on instead of, like... like uh, I, I don't know. Maybe it's the shot. Or maybe... Yeah, it's it's, just yeah. That looks very unique. But, like, yeah, I maybe just think also, like... Shorter. Yeah, because also, like, the thing is with the TV, um, with this, they did a good job of showing, like, this Superman can actually be vulnerable somewhat. 
Right. So that's always been my issue with Superman is that I just felt like he was always too OP power wise, especially for the people he's fighting. It's just like, mm-hmm. dog, if I had your power set, none of your villains would be an issue for me outside of maybe Darkseid and Brainiac. Right. Mm. I think, no, I think no, but, um, that's the other problem with Superman is OP. He's like literally just too strong. He literally, he, every fight he's, he, he's in, he's holding back because he obviously doesn't want to kill people. Because he's a good person. Every fight he's holding back. And he's a good, besides the good person. Like, no, but I mean, it's, uh, it's, there's holding back, but I'm saying, like, he has a lot of options as well. Like, every time he fights Lex, right? I don't understand when Lex is having kryptonite that Superman is going to go engage in close quarters combat. Because it's like, dog, you can see, like, three billion kilometers or whatever the hell is. Like, you can, hmm. like, you can, like, speak in space. Which I don't understand how you do that. And he like, and I there was a comic book where he heard um, uh, Jimmy Olsen's whistle from space or something like that. Where it's like, there's no sound traveling, but somehow he heard Jimmy Olsen's whistle and whatever. So it's just like he could fight like Lex Luthor out in space, far away from the Kryptonite, and just like laser off Lex Luthor's armor until Lex Luthor is defeated, or he yeah, can. But also remember, yeah, yeah it's so also the... just a big story problem. Like if if you're unless you are a, an overlord, uh, Ein Sama type of, you need a little bit of story just to keep the because otherwise. The only overpowered person who actually works is Ainz because he just he massacres people. He's like, I'm, I'm, like if no, you're I mean, an overpowered Saitama, superhero, Saitama works. Saitama, Saitama works is the though. best example. Ainz, he's basically evil at this point. We're talking about Overlord, right? But Saitama still he's kills, basically... kills, kills his enemies. That, that that's the thing. No, but I'm saying like with Superman, right? I feel like for me, if DC ever just put like a proper cap on his powers, he would work more, in my opinion. Okay, because I'm like. Because yeah. I'm like, I, I just, it just feels like, it just feels like, it's like the thing of where when you're in a dangerous situation and you know you need the ability to stop it and you have that ability but you don't use it, now it just becomes like, it feels like low-key kind of stupid to me. Like, when we talk about the Doomsday fight, right, that's one of the most iconic Superman fights of all time. But it's just like, why didn't you just keep him in space? Why didn't you whip his ass there? Because you could. No, I'm saying, like, he tackled him into space, and then he just tackled him back into Metropolis. I, okay, I don't I, know the fight. I've never seen, I've never read the comic myself. Like, I know, for example... Well, in the comic, he just fist fights him, from what I remember, which was yeah. also dumb. But in the animated thing where they did, because they did do the death of Superman yes, in a movie. Yes, I remember it, yes. And, but, that one, and that one was the thing. Like, he takes him into space, and I'm just like... Dog, take him to the sun and just batter him in front of the sun. Like, you get stronger the closer you are to the sun. So fight him at your best, because this is the strongest guy you've ever fought. No, I'm going to tackle him right back into the center of Metropolis. Like, why? Where I'm all the people to... are. Yeah. Because their insurance is great. <laughs> all right, guys. Um, anyway. I think, I think that's, that, would, that should wrap it up um, on the news about Superman. So the other thing that we need to talk about now is that uh, I'm sorry if I'm gonna butcher his name, but um, Giancarlo Esposito is oh, joining the, the MCU. MCU. Esposito, yes. is he playing what? <laughs> we don't know yet. So apparently he's, he's, he's role playing is... an original. Apparently he's playing an original character. Oh, yes. Okay, cool. So you're not gonna do the X Men thing, right? Because I heard the rumor was that he's going to be like Magneto. Hey, we don't know. They might just switch it on us. There's like Marvel yeah. is in a weird space right now, so yeah. They might, might just be... say they might just say the origin. It's it's his original in the MCU as Magneto. <laughs> no, you know, not even thing? he might he he because he was like lobbying for Professor X or something. Yes, he was. Yeah, he, uh, he was, wanted. He wanted professor. No, they said they thought it was going to be Professor X. Doesn't even make sense. But, uh, but now yeah, they it's... have left it open, and oh, now they're keeping mystery about. It. Not that they've left it open. Obviously, they they have cast him as someone, and they're writing something. But uh, for us peasants, they are keeping it a mystery. I mean, yeah, but they're, they're not really good at keeping secrets anymore, if we're being honest. Marvel is not that good at keeping secrets like, like they used to. Mm. In the past. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, that's the thing. Like, it'll leak and we'll, like, yeah, somebody will... 
I think also the thing is, though, is that, like, just in general, like, with Marvel and the stuff that they're doing, like, especially, like, how they did the Silver Surfer reveal, it's mm. kind of just, like, they, they'll do anything, and it's just, like, it feels like they're making announcements to make internet buzz instead of announcements for a, for a good movie. Right. So it's just, like, they know people are going to argue, they know the algorithm is going to go crazy, and, like, it's, like, uh... I mean, it's again, I'm not saying that they're cast. I'm saying I'm not. I'm not saying that they're casting specifically to create Rara, but it's just like the more they try to do this diversity take and stuff, and you know, there's no problems with diversity. I want to make this very clear, but there is a thing where if you just start fighting with the source material, it's going to hurt your movie. Yeah. Maybe like, they might. They fight with he might the be bit of a doom. They don't knows? even know it. Yo, he's too no. They don't even know the source fight. material, so that's why it's always that's why it's always looking like a fight. And uh, it's always uh, looking. I think, I think he made a good guess there. I think it is going to be Victor Van Doom because think about it. They just got rid of um, what's his name? Creed. Uh, Jonathan Majors. They just got rid of Jonathan Majors, right? And they said if they're not going to do um, Kang, they're going to they might switch to Van Doom. And or then, Apocalypse, and which we're going to talk they, about. They, yeah. they better, I'm saying, if they make Doom black, it is going to flop. Here's why. Doom <laughs> fans have a very specific idea of who Doom is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, because it's from that country. What's that country called again? Latveria. Yeah. Latveria, yes. So he's supposed to be like European, European. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, he, yeah, yeah, like, I and, mean, and, and I mean, I know he has a royalty. The, I know, I know. No, he's not royalty. Not royalty. He, he just takes over the oh, okay. country because yeah. he wants to, uh, not not oh, because okay. he wants to, because he feels he has to type of thing. Because yeah, Doom is he's that guy who's he he's like Madara. He thinks he's he's doing the the right thing even if it looks bad or he's whatever. Like, I'm the best man for the job, so I'm going to kill everyone else and take it. Yeah, yeah. Right. And I'm saying like, in I know he has like I, Romani. I guess people were saying Romani heritage. Yes. You know, I don't know what that means, but I'm saying if they make Doom black, it is not going to work out. Like this is the thing where you say they're fighting with the source material because it's just like there's a there's other guys like there's this guy called Moses Magnum who tried to take over Wakanda at some stage or whatever, and he like he was like he was a very big big bad or whatever. And there's another villain I'm forgetting his name now. He was kind of like the high evolutionary, but he's like you know the black version of the high evolutionary. I can't remember his mm-hmm. name. He gets featured like very little in the comic books or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying the point being is that if you're trying to get a doom like villain that is black, they exist. They just need people to write about them yeah. and show them and showcase them. Yeah. So. It's like this thing of, like, if you're going to make him an original character, do that or pick one of those characters or whatever. But don't, like, this race swapping thing, it's not helping. Yeah, bring it's in just Bishop, not. Dog, bring in Bishop, dog. That's what I want from the X-Men. No, like, the X-Men, like, I'm saying, one of my issues with the X-Men, is, and it's yeah. a big one, is that all the people who are not white, they don't get a chance. Like, Sync is not there. A prodigy <laughs> has not been seen. Monet think, is not being seen at all. I think all. that's why that's why people are so skeptical about Captain America Four because people are like, we're not feeling Falcon that much. It's because Falcon was like a tertiary character <laughs> in Captain America movies, even though he was supposed to be like secondary. I mean, he is secondary, but he was just not given enough screen time or the proper treatment that he no, should. And have also, it's like, did he need to be capped? Like, I think there's another thing where it's just like, he didn't need another identity. I feel like they needed to, I mean, this is my personal opinion. There's obviously going to be people who disagree. And maybe it's because I'm, I'm South African. On I, I'm on your side, bro. Because I think you can't make him not Falcon anymore after what? One movie or two and a half movies like this? What can you even say? Like, there's there's been no Falcon movie. So we've gotten sample, 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 and now he's not Falcon anymore. That's kind of lame. Yeah, but if you look at uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, he does have a sidekick who is now going to be the new Falcon, I think. So Yeah, but I'm saying, like, even that, like, it fell flat in the comic books to the point where that character kind of just got pushed to the wayside. Like, I haven't seen that character since. Right. Maybe somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I haven't seen, like, oh, maybe I've seen him in a panel or two, but I'm just saying, I feel like this formula is not working. It's yeah. like, take the characters, give them their identity specifically, let yeah. them grow within those specific... Like, for example, the reason why the Bat Family is so success, so successful, right, is simply because Nightwing stayed Nightwing. Yeah. 
Red Hood stayed Red Hood. Right. And Red Robin, before they messed him up, Tim Drake, he was Red Robin. He had a specific distinctive design from everybody else. Right. We get to Spoiler, we get to Oracle, and even Batgirl to a certain extent. Like, they stay themselves. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's no, like, nobody is vying to be Batman. It's right. so much mm-hmm. so to the point where people, when people do try to become Batman, it still doesn't stick. Because the people who love Nightwing, they want him to stay Nightwing. The people who love Batman, they want him to stay Batman. So right. when they go back to their respective identities, then everybody is like, ha, huh, okay, we're back home. Now when we get to the people who fill in Batman shoes, they still want. They're just filling in. They want to go back to their to Mm. their original selves. Making new characters. Harley Quinn is my favorite example of an original character. It's from the comic. It's not from the comics. It's from the cartoon, the animated series. It started there, and then it became so and so. So um, Daredevil as well. In the comic, in the comics now, they've added a new character called Echo. Do you know what I mean? They just no, no, no. Echo, Echo's always been there. She's always been there. Echo. Sorry. Um. Ninja chick, where's green? Ah, oh, gosh, they, I know she's like, she's like from the last few years. It's a new one. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like how they included, is it Punch? Ninja the new Joker, the Joker's new girl? There's Punchline. Punchline, Joker, yeah. Punchline. Uh, like, yeah. Just add stuff. We can Ish, do- Anyway, next. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, guys. Let us know your thoughts. Uh, do you think Esposito is gonna be Doctor Doom or Professor X? Or are you excited about this at all? Let us know. All right. The next thing I'm that we're gonna be talking Doom. about. Question: What do you guys feel about Jonathan Majors replacing Black Panther? <laughs> <laughs> that would uh, confuse... Jonathan Majors as uh, Jonathan Majors as T'Challa. Yeah, why that not? That would confuse the fans, though. No, you know what? No, because people no. are grown up. They can tell the difference between <laughs> fiction and reality. I'm so sick yes. of this. It'll confuse the fact. No, y'all know. Y'all know they are actors. Like Jonathan Majors is not at home. Like I am Kang. No, he, he he takes the suit off. He goes home. Like Robert Downey Jr. said this. He's like, I'm just an actor. Like when people were expecting to see Iron Man in Oppenheimer, it's like, no. <laughs> Mm. But anyway, yes, yeah, so I just wanted to ask that question. Yeah. Like uh, Buckmeister said, I think uh, from South Africa, uh, Bongo Koza, he'd, he'd, he'd be a great one. Ooh, or Damson ooh, Idris. Ooh. Right. No, Bongo Koza would be perfect. Bongo Koza would be per- perfect. Like, like, those if, are the only guys, like, for please me, watch. Those are the please two watch people. Heart. Please watch Heart of the Hunter, guys. Please, we need to review that movie because, uh, like, Bongo Koza, like, that whole movie, he's screaming, I'm T'Challa. Like uh, T'Challa, like just T'Challa. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, we just want to talk about this quickly. There is a rumor that The Rock is going to be playing Apocalypse. Oh boy, this guy well, is going to be playing. To this guy. According to The Rock's contract, he can't lose a fight. Yeah. Um, he can't get beaten up. So how can he be Apocalypse? Are we saying yeah. Apocalypse? Yeah. Yeah. I don't get it either. I mean, he does get some loses exactly. here and there, um, some losses here and there. I mean, when you look at Hobbs and Shaw, you know, in the first act or so, Idris Elba does kick their butt. But, I mean, it's not really a loss of sorts. <laughs> no, because yeah. also remember, mm. they specify that he's like a super, even though they're all superhuman, like, this can't miss me with this nonsense that the, the Fast and the Furious crew is just regular they're people. They're superheroes, Stop dog. It. Let's be honest. <laughs> superheroes. They became superheroes. No, I'm telling you now. Like, yeah. Yeah, after Vin, they're flying. Um, I'm saying first Don spy, Toretto. Right? The spy. cars are they doing what? Yeah. No, I'm saying Don Toretto versus the Hulk. Maybe the Hulk wins, but it's closer than people think. No, like, no, anyway. no, 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 no. The Hulk is the Hulk is not gonna win because Vin Diesel's contract says that he shouldn't get punched more than five times or something. <laughs> and, also, and also remember, Vin Diesel has got family. family. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, this thing yeah. with Apocalypse and the Hulk, I mean, and The Rock, <laughs> gotta get the Hulk, The Rock, I, I don't know, because don't the know thing is, it's... the thing is with The Rock, right, the thing is with The Rock, like, he's charismatic, great charismatic guy, but, like, when you ever make him a villain, or, like, if he's supposed to be monotone, I don't think he's got the range for that kind of subtlety. Like, I think people are looking at the muscles and they're thinking that, like, and I'm like, Apocalypse, I mean, as much as I don't understand Apocalypse, because I promise you, I've tried. I, I mean, he's I like... I get it. Even in, the, he, in 97, dog, I get it. 100%. 
like I, I guess you know it's evolution survival of the fittest but it's just like i okay survival of the fittest to survive what right. like i mean even even vandal savage says that he's trying to just evolve humanity in general i don't know what um apocalypse's goal is to evolve the mutants i'm not sure where the end goal lies he but the point is like he's a, yeah the point is he's, he's supposed to be like this big monologue giver you know, he's supposed to have these dope one-liners. He's supposed to be cool. And I'm like, I don't know if The Rock can deliver that. Unless he's doing, like, a WWE promo to me. I'm like, I don't... But now, here's the question, though. Arnold Schwarzenegger is a big McMuscle man, right? Yeah. Like, act. If you've seen any of his old stuff, he can actually act. He can yeah. act. Yeah. Stallone can act. Right. Okay, but Stallone. I haven't seen anything with Schwarzenegger, but Stallone, I'll give you. No, 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 no. I mean Terminator, but like, yeah. I, I outside of that, I don't know. Okay, have you seen Maggie? It's a zombie one. It's actually pretty interesting. No, no. Uh, Stallone can. St- I mean, uh, Schwarzenegger can act. act dog. I'm yeah. telling you. But now, yeah, can. question: Can we really say? And I feel bad saying this, but is The Rock? Is he not like a Keanu Reeves level actor? Do you know what I mean? Where, <laughs> as opposed to like, as opposed to like a. Daniel, not Daniel Day Lewis, that's too strong. But like a Samuel Jackson or something like that. Can we really say he can act to the level to be apocalypse? Is my point. I don't think he can do it. Mm. I don't think Yeah, he I mean, like the thing is he, like like Keanu, because I mean Keanu is a great example. Yeah. Keanu functions in specific scripts. Yes. Like if we go to what was the one with um Patrick Swayze, um uh oh, Fast and um... Furious before Fast and Furious. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I forgot. I forgot the that name. Point it blank. was directed point by, blank. by a lady. Point blank. Point yes, blank. Yes. Yeah. Point yes. blank. Or speed, yes. even. Uh, yeah. Well, I didn't watch speed. Anyway, point okay. blank with Patrick Swayze <gasps> when they. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Point I'm 29. Break. I get to be blasphemous. Come on. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, point blank, like, or even the Matrix, like, where he's confused and he's learning what's supposed to be the world is about. I feel like yeah. that's when he's at his best. I know, Kung Fu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, now, if we get to something where he's supposed to be deep or whatever, and I've seen, like, some reviews of those movies where he has to act beyond his range, and yeah. it's like, hey, guy hoys. He hoys, but, uh, you know, what he's hoying, uh, other people are not catching. No one yeah. can say yes better than, than Keanu Reeves. You know that. You know, uh, John Wick. Yeah. No one yeah. can say better than him, dog. But yeah. now it comes to like a dramatic monologue of a bad guy explaining why he's a bad guy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know if The Rock can do that. Mm-mm. Like, I don't even think Keanu Reeves could do that. So I. No, no. I mean, I'm fi- like, look, if he's not talking and he's just supposed to be an intimidating dude using his yeah. physical presence, I or guess. Or like, 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 like Adam. No, but I mean, even in Black Adam, he but was Black Adam. Like in he Black Adam, he was supposed to be the bad guy, but he was still not the bad guy. He was still not the bad guy because his contract, you see. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying at the same time, also outside of just that, he was doing the Rock. Like I yeah, felt like he was he about talks. to say, I, was, I felt like he was about to say, Black Adam is going to lay the smack us down. Like uh, that's yeah. what I was expecting. It doesn't matter that you are Sam. <laughs> yeah, like who are you? I right. just know <laughs> your role and so, shut your so, mouth, Hawk Man. Like. Yeah. So finally, so across the board, Black Adam uh, has we, returned. Uh, yeah. We don't have confidence that he would do a good job. That's that's no, what we're saying. No, at all, not at like, all, yes, not from me. And I love the Rock. The, the Matrix. I like, like, have you noticed the uh, the Rock also? I actually, someone um, made a thing where like eighty percent, seventy percent of his movies, he's literally wearing the same outfit. Yeah, with the brown shirt and the the, the brown the, shirt thing. Yeah. And yeah. he's literally playing. He's the in a same jungle somewhere. In, yes. Or oh, he's in and a jungle. Also he's too much the... of a presence to like disappear into the role. Like I know we hate Oscar Isaac, but like you know you can still disassociate Oscar Isaac from his portrayal in Apocalypse because you know like he's, he's good. Yeah. Yeah. He's, a good actor. But I... he's such a good actor. Yeah, yeah but I'm saying also just in general. Isaac. That's the thing. He's a good the actor. Brian he... Singer. Yes, that's a direct But I'm saying, like, yeah, just in general, though, like the uh, with the rock, yeah, it's scene. hard to yes. divorce. It's it's hard to divorce. Like, that one. Yeah, the, I yeah, agree. Like, I yeah. Agree. Like, if I see the rock, I'm like, you know, it, it again. It works in certain movies. Like, I think Jumanji people liked Jumanji a lot, and like again, the the rundown. I I like that movie of the rocks and all of that stuff. 
Like, I'm not saying he's not entertaining as an actor. I'm just saying, like, what you need for Apocalypse, I don't think he's got that. I don't think he's got it either. Mm. Yeah. All right. Same. Guys, please let us know your he's thoughts the in the comments below. He's got the people's eyebrow. That's it. Yeah, just let us know in the comments below uh, what you guys think of The Rock uh, being cast as Apocalypse. <laughs> And then, uh, do you guys agree? Professor with X, you jabroni, I will <laughs> lay the smackers down on you and Magneto. <laughs> what apocalypse is cooking? <laughs> I'm the way. Oh, um, <laughs> guys, on something else quickly. Uh, so just on a, uh, just a quick one. The movie Fall Guy came out recently, and unfortunately. It didn't do well at the box office. I mean, according to CNBC.com, it says that uh, Fall Guys stumbled to 28 million during its first weekend in May. And you know how it is. The first opening weekend, you need to really make big numbers, right? Mm. Um, what was this even about? Like, I've seen it floating on the internet. Explosions. So it's about, it's about Ryan Gosling being like a stunt guy. And I think something happens uh, during... The main actor disappears. The main actor disappears. And then, yeah. Ryan, and then the studio yeah. like, yo, Ryan Gosling, the stunt guy, can you please go find him? Yeah. And that's the mission. He has to go find this guy that's been kidnapped by, like, the mafia or something. <laughs> and it's like, what? <laughs> and it's based on a series. I think this is the original series. Yes, but based- apparently they're not connected at all. Like, the, the, it, apparently Ryan Gosling's name is, relates to this guy's name but the storyline is completely off from yeah and i mean we also have mistaken identities type thing and then the person has to fight out of it uh, and to save himself type of thing you know like you go like uh, those movies where the couple is in france and then they mistaken for spies and then uh-huh. They, they do what right. needs to be done, and then they have somehow okay. survive it. Like they just it. happen to be competent enough, even though it's mistaken at Yeah, they just happen to be competent yeah. enough, like spies. <laughs> I mean, is, wasn't that like a Hitchcock thing where it was a normal person thrust into a weird situation? Type yeah, of thing? it's a normal person. Yeah, but it's also because um they don't do spy like things. That's why they survive. Like right. you know, you'd expect a spy to like. Um, do A and B, and then because it's a normal person, they'll do C, and then because they did C, they managed to get away, type of thing. But it's weird though, you know. You normally you would think two attractive people, like an attractive guy and attractive woman, would at least get people coming flocking to the theaters. But no, unfortunately, no, 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 that's dog. not the case we, anymore. We passed that era now because yeah. the other thing is one, tickets mm-hmm. are expensive. Yeah. Two, yes, 170, dog. You can go. Yeah, have- two, like with streaming services, it's just like this felt like a streaming service movie from what the, from what I know. Right. And all of that stuff. Mm. And I think the other thing is the way they promote these things. Like you need to make it an experience for the viewer. So, like for example, if you're having these guys promote these things, you need to do like that's why like social media and like YouTubers and on all of that stuff. Like first off, you need to determine how much you need to make back because you're not going to be competing with these Marvel or these right. big franchises. It's not going to happen. Right. So you need to determine how much you've spent and how much you need to what's what's the profit that you're looking for. Right. Then. You need to start looking at Emily. Is it Emily? What what's her name? Lance. Lance. Is, is it Emily Blunt? Emily yeah. Blunt. Yeah. Wait, isn't that Krasinski's wife? Yes. Yeah, it is. Yeah, is. A quiet oh. face, Edge of Tomorrow. That's she was okay. actually she was actually the first choice to play the Black Widow back in 2000 and whatever, 10 or 9, when, when Iron Man 2 came out. But I she, thought she was also going to play uh, Sue Storm in the MCU, but anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. Like, you need to look at, okay, who's the fans of Emily Blunt? Who's the fans of Ryan Gosling? Mm-hmm. Now, how do we get them into the theater multiple times, basically? So what's the things that they like? And then right. also, you got to switch this up and not make it a generic plot. Like, a mistaken identity with a stuntman, already it feels like this is Hollywood plot number 79 or whatever. Right. Oh, right. And then, Actually, it's like that movie, that Johnny Depp movie, where he's a spy and it's funny type of thing, you know? I yeah, can't remember so, what it's called. The tourist. So I'm, the tourist. Yeah, like that, you know something. Like, I I don't even know how it goes. I I know yeah, he was. I didn't. I, I, didn't I didn't finish it. But I, I didn't finish it. To add on to what Buckmeister said is, um, yes, I think the expectations to me twenty eight million sounds like a success. I don't know how much money you guys thought this was gonna make. Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> no, but but the thing is, uh, like, 
apparently the last movie that made uh that those numbers was way in like the early 2000s or something if yeah. i'm not mistaken so no, but i'm saying like what was the budget to, they're comparing it to that but what was I the think. budget um just give me a second i'll just ch- I'll yeah let's check find out thing. the budget because and the also, budget also determines if it's a if it's a success so what you want to do because now the remember the modeling has 130 changed million. 130 million. Oh no, it's a failure. No, then it's a failure. It's Why a failure. did they spend that much money on such a simple premise? So 125 to 150. Uh, no, somebody somebody made bank here. Like, hey, this is like I feel like some of these mm-hmm. things are laundering so, schemes. 125 to 150. That's the budget and the box office 69.6 million. Well, I'm sure it's still continuing because um, I think it's still at the theaters. You have to double the number to get to include marketing. And this one had marketing. Yes. I heard about this movie months ago. Mm-hmm. It's because, it's because A, Barbie made 2.8 million. So right. they think to themselves, oh, well, Ryan Gosling is, everyone remembers my Ryan Gosling from the bio movie. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. he is more. He's Ken. No, Barbie yeah. made movie. Barbie made bank because it's Barbie, yeah. not because Ryan Gosling. Like, yeah, we're not in the era of we're not in the era of actors anymore. Like that, I think like the last guy that can do that, and even he's struggling right now it's is Tom Will Cruise. Smith. That's nah, Tom Cruise, dog. Will yeah, Cruise, okay, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Yeah. Cruise. Yeah. But I'm saying, but even Tom Cruise, it's not sticking the way it used to. Like, yeah. I mean, in Mission a Mission Impossible, if it drops now, it's not going to be doing the Mission Impossible numbers of Mission Impossible like six or seven and or five. And it's because of social media, bro. Most of these people are accessible, you know. Back then, they used to be mysterious. You used to read about them in magazines and newspapers and whatever. Now and you see them everywhere. And time to actually get to see them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and I'm saying for me personally, I like that idea because I'm like, the IP needs to sell itself. Like, you can't just expect to throw this actor in a movie. Your plot is horrible. Your your characters are horrible. But now because this guy is there, everybody's just going to look at it with rose-tinted glasses and decide, no, this is a great movie. It's like, no, 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 no. Well, you need to put the work in and write. Okay, and uh, you're saying, look, I respect what you're saying 100%, but I also think there's an element of I trust Will Smith in his script in his script choices. Like, for example, I don't trust Samuel Jackson. I don't trust <laughs> Nicolas Cage. I don't trust them at all. But like, let's say Will Smith. Uh, the oh, Nicolas movies, Cage just makes a movie. Yeah, but like, exactly. Same thing with Samuel Jackson. He shows up in everything. But Will Smith makes like, what, 20 movies maybe? And before Seven Pounds, every movie was a banger. Do right, you know I mean? right. So like, his decisions were worth listening to. Now yeah, even we're... even Denzel, his decisions at a point, even also, Morgan Freeman. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. I, I guess so, but I'm saying at the end of the day, I still feel like the product needs to sell itself. Like it can't sell itself on the actor. Hmm. One, I feel like that's unfair to the actor because like we've seen stuff like that. Like what did um Fastbender do? It was the serial murder. Oh, uh, the Assassin, ice... Assassin, Assassin Creed. Yeah. No, not Assassin's Creed. There was another movie he did where with the. Um, no, not, it wasn't called The Killer. What was it called? Like, basically, the murderer was ice. Like, he used snowmen. Um, oh. uh, what uh, was it called? Jeremy Renner. No, not Jeremy Renner. Um, uh, what's his name? J.K. Simmons is in it as well. Um, it's called uh, Snowman, Seven Snowmen or something. Ah, uh, Seven Snowmen. The, the snowman. I don't remember that's that one. That's uh, called uh, the, snow, the Snowman. Came out I in think it's... 17. Yeah. Yes, snowman. that's the one yes. I'm talking about. Yeah, the snowman. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, again, haven't watched it or whatever, but I like what's this? Like, I saw some clips of it and I was like, eh. but like basically when I looked at the reviews of it, people were like, they were banking on Fast Bender's stardom to save this mm, movie because the, the whole film. thing was bad. Right. Like the whole thing was just terrible from yeah. jump. Everything was horrible. But I would say nowadays, instead of the star, because I agree that the star age is over. I think that's true. Yeah. I think now it's the director. I think the director is the power now. I think. Mm, like, come on, David I feel like the not... fans are the are the stars uh, now. <laughs> ah, dog. Fans. Now I'm telling you, I feel like it's the IP because remember now, like for example, let's take Star Wars, right? Yeah. If they just said a new thing, like for example, the acolyte. No, I don't know who's directing. I don't know who's directing acolyte, right? Yes. Not sure of the director's name. We know somebody's directing it. Now. 
Yeah. If they Act generally Light is direct amazing. for episodes in these ones also. It's yeah, but I'm saying like, let's first, say, uh, not director, showrunner then, let's say yeah. showrunner. Okay, let's say showrunner. Don't know who the showrunner, but if Acolyte is a banger, yeah, then we're going to be like, okay, who is this person? So right. it feels like if you can take an IP and like, not just popular IP, but if you can take something and make it good, like for example, Arcane on Netflix, right? I yeah. don't know who directed it. I don't know who directed Arcane. I'm going to go find out because Arcane was amazing. Yeah, but, but I don't that's know. Word of mouth. Okay, but now, okay, but now that's word of mouth, right? But no, now I'm not talking okay. about word of mouth because when I found Arcane, I just watched it. I was just like, "What is this?" And then. But most people was like, "Yo, girl, you gotta check out Arcane." Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Maybe that Oppenheimer wouldn't have made any, wouldn't have made the money it made in the box office if Christopher Nolan's name wasn't there. Right. Because mm, everyone knows Nolan. Yes, a, a I think mind everyone bend knows Nolan. Movie. Yes, I think everyone knows <laughs> Nolan. Yes, but I'm saying like I think if like I uh, what I'm saying though is like a one if I think like the audience can sense when something is special. I true I think Fair. like I think when something you know something is good, you know somebody's put some like passion behind it or whatever. Like you don't need to know who's behind it in order for it to like sell itself. If you get what I'm saying, right? So like yes, Nolan of course, of course, like of course Nolan makes something like everybody went to go see Tenet, even though Tenet like people did not like Tenet right. or whatever. Why are you it like that? <laughs> like the way you say it's Tenet. Yeah, ten, we, ten, say, we call it Tenet. What, what is it? Tenet. Ten, that's the most African thing I've heard in my life. We say we say Tenet, tenet. but yeah, Tenet. Yeah, guys, we're I, South Africans by the way. So well, thanks for taking us out. I, okay, <laughs> but yeah, that's I'm how we say it. Tenet. Yeah. So tenet. I'm saying yeah, internet. Well, well, <laughs> uh, Actually, anyway. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, point being is that I think that I mean I'm not saying the age is over, and I'm definitely not saying that there's directors who don't have that type of pull because they are. But I think they are far and few. I think we're mm-hmm. now in the era where the IP's I mean, like, got to sell itself yeah. because everybody's competing now. Like everybody's got an idea, everybody's got a thing. There's a bunch of streaming services. Your idea has to win. Like, it can't be who's attached to the idea because, like, yeah, people attach themselves to everything. But if you don't have a salt, if you're not writing something you believe in, if you're not directing something you believe in, if you're not acting in something you believe in, usually this is going to be the result. But it also reminds me of what uh, Quentin Tarantino said before, you know, just going back to what Buckmeister is saying. It was like the thing about superhero movies, what they have done is people don't flock to watch Robert Downey Jr., they go watch Iron Man. They don't mm-hmm. go watch yeah, Chris yeah. Evans. They go watch Captain America. So definitely the IP or the character. If you're familiar with the character, then you will you will flock to the movies. Mm-hmm. Like we wanted to watch Black Panther. That's why we went to watch Black Panther. We wanted to watch Black Panther. That's the truth, you know. Um, so I I don't know, but yeah. Do you Again, but I'm just saying, like take these one slash these budgets in half. And start putting them on streaming services and then having the actors actually target their fan bases to make these things more successful. Like this thing of you trying to always take it to the theater. Like I'm saying this thing of you always trying to take it to the theater and you're taking such a basic premise. Like dog theaters nowadays, it needs to be an experience. Like it can't just be we just going because like, no, it's not going to work out. All right, guys, let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. Um, I just there's something else that I got, we want to talk about. It's uh, megalo, megalopolo, megalopolis. Hey, hey. Yo, 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 hey, megalopolis. Hey, you got this. Me- hey, megalopolis, slowly. yeah. So ah, after no, ah, those letters were shuffling you, dog. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, slow, my dog. English Say data, slow. my my English data bundles had depleted. So after <laughs> <laughs> Metropolis, after after Metropolis, I think it's a megalopolis, right? If I'm not mistaken, yeah. like in terms of like the city, the the, the um, size of the city. That, that makes sense, actually. I don't yeah. know, but that makes sense. I remember that in geography. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But yeah, so Francis Ford Coppola, the guy who directed The Godfather, that guy who directed Dracula in the 90s, that guy, the father of Sofia Ford Coppola, yeah, he the, he actually... Oh, he's got some dope movies. Yeah, he actually di- uh, directed this movie, Me- Me- uh, Megalopolis, and he's been thinking about it for decades. Uh, he actually, uh, um, uh, what's this, funded this movie himself, like out uh, of his own him, pocket. Tell him how to shoot a trailer, because I was hella confused. There's nothing on this trailer, dog. Like, because <laughs> some people were can like, I, this is can click. I, 
This is Men in Black 3. This, it actually intrigued me because it got me curious because I, something was happening uh-huh. and um, the way it was shot, it was beautifully shot. Um, the, the camera angle was beautiful. Right. The, um, the colors were, were, were beautiful. And I'm waiting for something, I'm waiting for something and nothing actually happens. So it, right. it, it, it's got me curious. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm I intrigued think, now. I think that time... I'm intrigued because... Yeah. Because... Be so can I just finish before you interject? Um, too many times I can watch the whole movie in the trailer. Mm. Yes. L- lately. You know, these lately days. it's been so like the, Yeah. The, the, lately you literally... You know in the, in the trailers before... You you would see an action scene maybe from the end in the being whatever, but in the beginning of the trailer, it, these trailers they literally do act one, act two, act three in the trailers. That's true. trailers before action scene from the end would be at the beginning, action scene in the beginning would be at the end, action mm. scene in the middle would be at the beginning. Like it, it's it made all over no the sense. Place. Yeah, it's all over the place. The only thing they did was try to make you understand. Like I am going to. To Buckmaster's house to give him his book, and then then you knew, okay, this is a journey about a book. That's the only thing you knew. You would right. see me uh, trying to jump over Buckmaster's house in the beginning of the movie. You would see me getting chased by dogs. Ruko, did you open a library in the Fire Nation? Because you've been on books today. It's been on books <laughs> lately. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's because um you and Rob have put books in my head because Rob's got books and you got uh, the web choose yeah. thing. So just books is up. Books are in my oh, head now. Okay. Anyway, yeah. yeah, sorry, finish your point. Yeah, so because the trailer didn't tell you, the, it, it, it just t- told you, like, there's going to be a cool action scene. Um, right. Zuko Wait, is in it. which trailer did you guys watch? I've actually. only seen the one with, the, with this one. The, the, there's only the one. There's only one where he, he, one. he, he he's, he's about to fall. And then well, I've seen, someone I've says seen, freeze. I saw two. I saw two trailers. So one I saw it was just a bunch of random scenes. I don't know what it was connected to. Was and then fake. this was the first one. It must have been fake. Yeah, I think this one, yeah. the one. Um, this that, is the that, legit that, um, one. Mr. Yes. Extraordinary God. That's the one. Okay. I, that's the one I saw. So the reason so, this okay. one. The and reason you this okay? one. <laughs> smooth, smooth criminal, Baba. Has been guys. Kanina, kanina di menas. <laughs> so the reason because of all that like every time you literally and now the trailers these days you see here comes Zuko and here this happens and oh no will Zuko overcome it and then you basically see the whole movie in the trailer like there's no suspense so this one it like I was waiting for like okay what's this about what's going on what's going on? okay what wait what 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 happened what happened it got me curious. Right. I don't know if it'll be good. I don't know if it's a thing, but it got me curious. And that's the first, that's the, that's the point of a trailer. A trailer is supposed to get you curious. You're not supposed to watch the whole damn movie in the trailer. So this one I am looking forward to because it's got me curious. And hopefully the next trailer that drops keeps, in, keeps it in that suspense mode so that I don't know what I'm going to watch. So that my mind is open to exploring my mind or doesn't already like oh i'm gonna watch this and then when something when it doesn't happen like that then i'm mad because i thought i was, I was coming for this movie but that, because i don't know what i'm going to be watching my mind is like this and now I'm more receptive to the little clues and i'm actually paying attention to the movie because i'm taking out the clues all right that's fair rob um okay um i had no hope in this movie. I just want to start off by saying that. And they were like, oh, it's his magnum opus. He had to sell mm-hmm. his whole vineyard to make this whole movie. Yeah. It's like, oh. Because apparently he does wines. I didn't yes, know that. He did wine. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. No actor just has actor money. They all have shares in everything, dog. Right. So uh, it makes sense to me. So, but then when he's like, okay, because my first and only thought was, as soon as a, as a director says to me that, I'm about to watch the most over, the most bloated yeah. Self-indulgent Zack Snyder nonsense I've ever seen in my life. Wait, but did you feel like <laughs> did you feel like that when you watched uh, um, um, Martin Scorsese's Silence? Yeah, I I wasn't a fan of Silence, dog. I, don't get me wrong, yeah. it's not a bad movie. I'm not at all. I'm just like it's I not one of his best. Yeah, yeah, I get what yeah, you mean. I didn't need to watch this. It's not right. New York. It's not right. 
departed. It's right. not any of those. It, it's it's far from departed. Yeah. Yeah. And remember, yeah. he says distribution agencies said no. So already my thought was, I bet you this, this movie doesn't have a plot. Yeah, like Francis Ford Coppola, <laughs> apparently most of the studios actually yeah. rejected the story. They're like, no, we're not going to do this. Yeah. And that's what, Zach, that's, what they, that's what Zach Snyder said. That's what they said to Zach Snyder as well. No. Oh, and Lord. Turns out it was no for a reason. <laughs> you know what I mean? Can more people say no to Zach Snyder, please? Can more people say no to him? Like, Yo, Jess, no, I'm but tired. Then, every time, uh, but every then time Zuko, a movie drops and then he's like, no, but I need extended cut. Just make the movie fucking Dude, Netflix the first said, fucking Net- Netflix said, dog, Fuck you man. have all the range. With, like, you have cut blanche. Yeah. Netflix gave him cut blanche and he still wants an extended cut. Why, dog? George Lucas is Why? a <laughs> that means you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. Zuko sounds like a disappointed black mom. Hey, dog. <laughs> no, no, man. I'm just, it doesn't you you the I'm movie, just so. tired. Buckmeister, you can't tell me that you have an a, a idea for uh, T'Challa versus Kang, and then I give you, and then you say you need 100 Rand to make it. And then I give you 120, and then you say, no, I need 50 more. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah. I gave you everything that you wanted, and then you still need more. That yeah. means you don't know. You don't, you don't have a vision. You don't, have, you don't understand your vision. You don't understand your idea. I mean, sometimes it does happen that uh, directors are over budget, but at least they still know what they want to do. Yes. But with yeah. Snyder, it's no, like, Zach, no, no, no. Zach, he, cannot, he must not give, be given free reign. Yeah. That's the thing. He needs a box. He yeah. needs a here and a here. Like but, this but is. That, yeah. Sorry, Rob. I think we. I think we. We really interjected with what you were saying. No. Sorry, man. No, no, it's fine. My point is, he gets over bloated. Suddenly, there's no plot, right? Um, and not to you know, pat ourselves on the back. Me and me and Gutso. We basically talked about this in the last two movies, where there's film writing formats, where there's steps you take in between your plot. Journey, right. journey stuff. So when someone says stuff like this, my first thought is none of that's going to be there. It's going to end up being bloated. It's going to end up being slow. But having said all of that, that one minute trailer of him like freaking out because Adam Driver is a good actor. Yes. Well, yo, know, he's just so good. Look, and he can he, be in he can be in bad things, but he's not the reason they are bad. Exactly. He's like JT. Mm. It's always mm. the best thing of a. He's always the best part of a bad thing. Same right. thing. Same thing with that, um, Gary Oldman, yes. yes. Always get part of a bad thing. But right. anyway, yeah, my point ends up being that that time stop thing where I was like, oh, I'm watching a different movie to the one I thought I was watching. It was better than the Acolyte trailer. It had no movie. Wow, you're right. <laughs> it's way better because it changed. I'm like, I'm watching one movie. I'm watching another movie. Holy cow. And I still don't know what the movie is. Right. Present. Right. Present. So right. yeah, I'm excited. I'm gonna. I'm. 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 I'm it's got my ten antennas going. So yeah, that's all I have to say. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But now, um, uh, uh, uh Rob, my, now you've my... got me. You've got me scared now because <laughs> of what you said. As soon as someone says this is my magnum opus, I've poured everything into it. You are right. That's when they just do whatever. It, it I mean, becomes look, free for, for me. I was very. It becomes like, free thought, just... and they do a. Q, Z, W, they do whatever the hell they want. And it, and it only makes sense usually to doesn't them. make sense. Yeah. It only makes sense to them, yeah. Look, I mean, Francis Ford Coppola is an accomplished director, so, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure, and I'm pretty sure people are going to go off the name of, off the strength of the name alone. Personally, I was just confused the entire time. I was just yeah. like, okay, why, like, I mean, yeah, I'm asking questions. But I'm like, I don't understand, like, what's going on here. So, I mean, after he does the smooth criminal lean, and then it looks like he's about to walk on air, and then the trailer ends, I, I kind of, I mean, for me, I was just like, I, 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 I wouldn't know what I'm going for. Like, me personally, I'm like, and I, I know I'm an action junkie at heart. I get that. Right. But I'm just saying, me personally, I'm like, would I want to go spend money on something where I have no indication of what's happening here at all? Like, even if we go to, um, like, you know, Tenet again, back to Tenet with, um, uh, what's this? Nolan. That, yeah, with Nolan. At least there, I know people have backwards powers. I don't know why. I don't know what for. I don't know who's fighting who. 
but they can reverse time somehow. Right. Like that was the pull, right? right? Right. Here, I'm just like, okay, is he stopping time? Did someone else shout? Mm. Because it seems like, like the snapped... danger room, because it sounded like he was talking to somebody. Yeah, and yeah. like he snapped his mm. fingers and then time started moving again. So I'm like, did he yell at himself in his brain? But then why did they do that echo thing? Right. So I'm like, I don't know what's, I'm not sure what the pull is here, personally, for me. But I'm not sure what the, when the thing but said th- that's stopped, the pull to, to me. Surprise. Did that not catch you? Not not really, because I just felt like I was watching the Men in Black thing again, and I was just like, oh, okay, they're doing, yeah. uh, is this Men in Black 3 uh, Godfather style, because it's Francis Ford Coppola? I don't know. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Look at what they did to my boy. I have to use the denuralizer. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, guys, do let us know your thoughts on um I don't want to butcher it again, guys. Someone help me there. Uh Megalopolis. Megalopolis. That's the one. Let us know your thoughts <laughs> That's on one. it. Uh, <laughs> and then um there's just one last one. Um it's a South African production. It's Local called. Is Pardon. Local is lacquer. Yeah. Um. Uh, just give me a second. I'll show you guys just now. I thought we should just oh. do something like that because we always do, uh, American or other stuff. Yeah. So how to ruin love? It's a. It's, I'm assuming it's gonna be a mini series. It's basically a spin off of how to ruin Christmas. So basically every year, except for last year, Netflix has been pushing this how to ruin stuff. Um. I every love year. it. There's been How to Ruin Christmas, and then what, what was the next one? How to Ruin a Funeral, right? And then the other one was like How to Ruin a Baby Shower or something? I don't know. Okay, I didn't see I, that one. Yeah, so now this one is like a spin-off, meaning the main character, most of the main characters not, are not here. It's just the two main characters from the pre- previous one that have, I guess, friends who are now falling in love or something like that. Like one of the characters is probably their friend, and then it's called How to Ruin Love. Um, so basically, according to News24, it says, because, um, yeah, these two are basically the main characters from the spin, the previous one. They're a couple. Uh, Zuko, I think you would remember them. They are the ones that got married in the first one. Um, mm. uh, so it says, after giving last year's festive season a miss, the viewer favorite Netflix franchise How to Ruin returns with its first ever spin-off next month. So it's coming out on the 31st of May. Um, and it's called How to Ruin Love, The Proposal. I don't know if you guys have seen the trailer. Um, oh, I didn't catch this one because I was in the middle of something else, but I'll probably try and catch it. Yeah, I mean, so like, uh, like um, the one that I watched um, on, on Netflix, was it, was it uh, How to... No, Ruin that Christmas? was something else. I think that was, was something else. Does it have a goat called uh, a sheep called Sagulan or a goat? No, 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 no. A goat. Succulent. You know, what I watch. I no, no. I'm thinking about Zulu wedding, so never mind. Oh. Uh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Never mind. So this I is know the succulent this... is the one. This is How the. How do you call a goat way. succulent and then you don't want to eat it? Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. The name literally says "eat me." So you guys say you get you guys are saying that this one is uh, or How to Ruin Christmas was a good one. Because when I saw it, the trailer, it, it, it was funny. It was definitely funny, and it's a. I, I enjoyed How to Ruin Christmas. Okay, yeah. maybe but, I'll uh, give it a chance the because main when I saw it, passed it felt... away. That's why. That's why they didn't. Uh... Oh. Do it last year, no? Yeah. Yeah. The the. That's why. That's why I think they. What's they the name again? To make... uh, something Lirai. Yes, but I think she that's why they pivoted away. to make these two the main characters since the main character now passed away. If that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you have people like Tina Jaffa here, you have Tando Tavete, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll give it a shot because, like, I think the thing is, like, when we, when we look at our local actors, a lot of these guys are just tired because they're in weekly soapies. And the writers are tired also. Right. So you get very tired performances in these things where it's just like nobody cares about what's going in here, really. It's like, oh, okay, this, uh, I'm, I'm... I was cheating with this one, and I mean, we don't get you know Forrester levels of of craziness or whatever, but you do get like, oh, okay, I was cheating on this one, or okay, my plot is now I have AIDS or something, or <laughs> oh my, oh my plot is um, the I'm a ancestors, boy, or, or yeah. the ancestors have cursed me, and my right. toilet I, is clogged, and and, wow. and all of that stuff. 
Wow. Aids, curses, and tribes. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, mm, it seems like mm. that's that's been the quota for a while, though, if we're being honest. Yeah, and it's unfortunate because we, oh, oh, the... we've we've narrowed our our thing so much. Yeah, and then when we do get it, and also I think the other issue that we have is because we usually have like one chance to do it, so we try to do also too many things. You know, yeah. it's it's right. it, it's that thing where. You've this is your one chance, so now you make a pointy <laughs> instead of just making a bride, making a whatever. <laughs> so that's that's also what happens with these things. And then my biggest uh, my biggest pet peeve with South African movies is continuity, continuity of the story. Mm. Mm. Um, Ah, so please, then, there's d- no d- continuity d- there, chief. <laughs> development of of the story, like I will right. literally. Like someone will come. I remember. I can't remember which one, which movie I was watching. Uh, it, but it was a South African one. It was uh, these friends. It was with Tapelo Mokoena, and they go to like a game farm or something. Mm. And then this guy, they literally drop a bomb that, um, uh, oh yeah, the baby's not the baby's yours. It's not my husband's. This woman was married to this guy since like college. And uh, then they dropped the, the, a, a bomb that, yeah, the baby is not his, it's yours. Right. And then nothing happens with that. Like, you know, like the, like the guy goes on like a, a, a walk. He just found out he's a father. He goes on a walk. And that's oh my it. God, I'm a father. And that, that's it. <laughs> like the husband doesn't yell at her. Like, oh, I think the husband knew. Right. So like, but... Uh, not like nothing comes of it, you know. I mean, you can you cannot drop a, a nuclear bomb, and then it just. I mean, my experience with yeah, like it's South that bomb under the table thing. Mm. Yeah, I'm yeah. saying my experience with South African movies is um, what's this? Is when I went to go see Zulu Wedding, and I was really going to go support. And I'll tell you now that whoever wrote that movie, they yo, I don't think they cared about any of the characters in there because the black it's Americans. Okay. Because the like black a, Americans were like the most like you, I don't know if racism is the word, but it was close to it. Like, <laughs> like, and then also like the the guy who's supposed to be a good guy in there or the good American in there, he's like is he's just as ignorant as his American friend. And like the American friend was like bowing at the airport, and he was like, ah, we are in Africa now or something. And it was like, and that's the thing. They also they like to play into stereotypes, you know. Yeah, like, you know, let, you know sometimes, like, let sometimes, me, let me ride the zebras, and it's like, dog, you literally came in a car. Like, come on. Sometimes <laughs> South African comedy is is way too slapstick. Like, just because you're a comedian doesn't mean you have to like. Like your eyes don't have to pop out every time. Have you ever seen so, like South African comedies posters, dog? They're always like, yeah. this is not funny, dog. And then now you're doing this in movies now. Hey, yeah. How about we go outside and dog? There's nothing <laughs> funny about this. And the thing is, right? There could be a space for it, right? Because I don't know if you guys have watched Japanese stuff. Sometimes mm. they can be exaggerated as well, like to the point where they mm. even do the animes. Mm. I even watched one where I swear to God, I forgot what it was called. But they did the anime style falling down when you when someone says something ridiculous, like an entire classroom full of people went like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> so but like, they but works. they they have a smart way of doing it though. It it doesn't always seem like it's exaggerated, if that makes sense. Even if the scene is exaggerated, you don't see someone like, unless if they're really okay, like surprised. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, like, what I think is, it, what I think is, is that it's just that, like, because when you see these actors in other places, like, they blow you. Away. Like, when you see them in theater and everything, you're just like, where was this uh, on oh, on yeah. this? And it's just like, yeah, no, I mean, like, you know, if you're tired and you're doing something week in and week out, and like as a writer, also, you have to write this thing week to week. You're not necessarily gonna care about continuity, especially if people just continue mm-hmm. watching. Yeah. So, I mean, if I we get to something to... like Netflix, like, that's why streaming is so good. Like, that's why, I, like, South African actors and producers and things really need to take advantage of, like, this streaming thing. Because when you have a format like that or whatever, you can, like, drop month to month. And then you can make something that's really good and really, like, exercise the talents Bro, of these writers and Queen actors. Solo. Queen Sono was amazing. 
Like, no, I'm saying like this thing that I'm talking about now, Heart of the Hunter, like, I mean, even the ending, I will say like just a quick spoiler alert, the ending felt a little bit rushed, but you get to see that like these actors really care about this material and the guy who's writing it, even if it's a generic plot, like they're really writing like the material for this generic plot, like right. they're invested in what they're doing. Right. Like, even in number number was good. Mm. Yeah. I so do, it's just like, like well, yeah, the so first I'm, one, not. Just not yeah. the one that dropped on Netflix. I like I like the one on Netflix. I don't know. Maybe I didn't watch the first yeah. one. So anyway, maybe I'm that's saying, why. Maybe that's why. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I'm saying it's never been a lack of it's never been a lack of talent or anything. I always think it's just been the way that South African media has been set up. It's just like it's. It's going to exhaust the actors. It's going to exhaust the it's writers. Too, yeah, we're yeah. too so soapy based. That's, that's crazy because if you think about it, why do we keep repeating so many actors that they can get tired in the first place? Why am I seeing one actor 75 times? Do you think it's gatekeeping? Yes, absolutely. Look yes, at, it is. The, half the cast of generations, I've seen them 56 times. Do you know right. what I mean? Or at right. least the school generations. Right. Al Mukhale, guys. Connie right. right. But I those two people them. that you mentioned, to be fair, in their defense, they produce their own things as well. True. That's to be fair. True. But, but, I, but I, I think get what you're saying. Yeah. No, no, but don't, let's, okay, let's not forget, they're not producing it with their own money. That's government contracts. 90% of the stuff that comes out, if not, if Netflix isn't paying it out their own pocket, the government's paying it out their own pocket. Not so, all of them, but I do get what you mean. No, you're right. Any yes. of them, though, more than you think. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, um, you're right. But you'd like be surprised. Government, they government, have to is, the quota, though. government it, is it, uh, government is out here funding, uh, oh, yeah. funding these things. Yes. Oh. Yeah, but but yeah. then it goes back to what we said about the quota, though. You yeah. have to meet that quota of the things that we listed. Yeah. Whether it's apartheid or whether yes. it's AIDS or whatever. Oh, exactly. so we can't get no superheroes. Okay, yeah. I see. What you won't you won't see a movie called Friday, like a Friday, yeah. a, a movie about about Friday. Fiction. I want a pop fiction. I want a Friday. I want a gravity. I want those. Have you noticed? Yeah, that's why most of our stories. It's always like they they are. It's it's totsy. It's yeah. you know. Mm. It's ve- it's very few. Sarafin. Yeah. It's very few of our movies are just like um. What was that wedding, wedding one? The one with with Tao and and Kenneth. White yeah. wedding. Uh, white the, wedding. Yeah, the white wedding. Yeah. You know, it's very few. Just like you know, dude going to his wedding and. His homie doing shenanigans and, and he's just trying trip. to. Yeah. It's a road trip, you know. Th- there's very trip. few yeah. of those ones. Yeah, we're never gonna get. Started. There's very few oh. of those ones. They always, yeah. for lack of a better word, I can't think of the proper. They're, they're always message based. But I think that's why Netflix saw a gap and now it's funding these South African productions. Yeah, and they can fill it, hundred percent. Hmm. But do you get my problem, though? If the government is funding all these projects, right, or at least sponsoring them, because sometimes what they'll do is they'll pay half, and then you have to yes. get the money, right? Right, right. Um, so then how can we keep seeing the same actors when one source is the one handing out the money? But remember, sometimes you need... Okay, that's a that's a good question. But sometimes you need a crowd puller, right? Oh, so obviously you'll find get someone... One. Don't but get just, the whole cost. Get but like just one. Just argue that the crowd pullers don't work. Buckmeister made a compelling argument that crowd pullers don't work anymore. Right. So and I, I don't think, and in, in South Africa specifically, and in South Africa specifically, outside of the Sobi base, I don't think that works. I yeah. don't think we have actors where, oh, this guy's a scientist. I'm gonna go see this movie. Oh, this guy's a um, what's this? This guy's a pilot. I'm gonna go see like Will Smith in one movie. He was fighting robot revolutions. In another movie, he's a dad just trying to get a job in a pursuit yeah. of happiness. You and know, like people will be like, "Oh, Will Smith is in that. I'm gonna go." I don't think we have those types of actors. Like I think it's supposed to be based on the IP. Now, when it comes to how we consume media, especially when it comes to SABC, like SABC doesn't, they they do a lot of safe things, if you get what I'm saying. Like, that's why a lot of stuff repeats. Like, a lot of soapies, like Isidingo, Muvango, you can find the same plot lines 
in all of these things. And even if some of the actors yeah, are Isidingo, better... Isidingo was pushing. Isidingo was... No, yeah. Isidingo did, but like there's a point where it became repeatish as well, to the point That's where true. it was like, well, okay, That's now it's the, it's now the Zamdeles. No yeah, I'm saying now there's the Zamdeles again, and it's this guy with the gold again, and it's like, it's the same stuff again, and, and like, that's what I, I'm I, saying. No, I like, think we the, get, yeah, you're right. Yeah. But, yeah. Anyway, sorry. My, my, just to finish up my point. My point is, is that these production companies never also take chances with the stuff that they make, or they never try to consolidate something and let's say, okay, let's make a season of this, and then we right. take it off the air. It's right. always got to be, this has to oh, keep going. Oh, it's soapy. Going. Oh, God, we're so soapy drunk in this country. Yes. That's why when that's why when Yuzo Yuzo dropped, it went so crazy. That's why when Gazlam dropped, yeah. it went right. so crazy. Zone that's 14. why when... um. Zone 14. Remember Zone 14 we'll before it came a soapy. We're mentioning production stuff, by the way. <laughs> before it became yeah. a soapy, Zone 14, right. it dropped. That's why it was fire. That's why these things, we looked forward to them. Because right. the story ended. We never got bored. They never, and then the writers never ran out of material. They had enough time to think of something. They were realistic. Okay. Mm. Yeah, they were like, okay, this season we are dealing with cheating. And then cheating, cheating, cheating. Next season, we are dealing with fraud. Fraud, fraud, fraud. Yeah. Next season, we are dealing... So they had enough time then to also research. Hey, man, tell me the story of cheating. Tell me the story of fraud. So when they brought it off, it wasn't just, oh, it's fraud. And then they... And then they, like... Uh, the, the fraud is done on an Excel sheet. And you're like... But it's on the phone. And you're like, huh? You know? Yeah, I think one of the problems... Because they had enough time to prepare for it. Yeah, I think one of the problems is that... Um... In a lot of other countries, not just not just America, but like European countries, and I would even argue some South American countries, yeah. a soap opera is where you start. Whereas like us in South Africa, a soap opera is where you end. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's oh, like, yeah. It's like, it's like where you retire. Where you start, you, <laughs> you, you meddle, and you end. Yes. For us, it's like I'm thing. saying, like, for example, guys, like I'm really praying, like, like what's this? Bonko Koza really impressed me in Heart of the Hunter. So I'm just like, this guy has like the potential to be like an action hero. Like if you want to make like, like an action, right. yeah. Like if you want to make like an action dude who can like do stuff action wise, or I mean, he can do other things as well. Like it's not even that he's just an action drink, but like you got a potential to make a like a, a multifaceted star. Like it's not going to be the era of stars where it's just like okay, Bonko Koza is in this. And people are going to go see this. You don't want him to be typecast, basically. But I'm saying he can be a guy where you can have, like, he can have a draw, he can have a pull, he can do something. And it's just like, that's why you need to start putting him in, like, more projects and stuff like that. You need to start building these actors and start taking chances and start doing the weird stuff and start letting, like, the weird anime South African kids take that weirdness and start producing stuff. (laughs) Like... Like, Let like I'm see. saying, like, yeah, that's the thing. Like, in, in like, India. Yeah, someone said, someone said, have you noticed, like, in, in, in South African adverts, like, we're always dancing, Omo. Why are you dancing for Omo? Colgate. Why are you dancing for Colgate? Why are you, why, I have never in my life, in, in all my jolling life, seen a woman dancing, like, why is she dancing? Hey, dog, like... No, but, like, also, just, but, um, what's this, in, not in defense of, but I'm saying, like, if you look at some South African adverts, like, especially, like, some Nando stuff, like, you get to see, they, these right. guys, if they took this and right. made it something, like, you can right. see, there's already, like, a great idea here. Like, if you took this and made it something. The Nando's right. team are the most creative filmmakers in South Africa. No doubt about that. Towards I mean, black issues. Percent. But when the even, DA even the and all the other guys, guys the, they are very quiet. Even the alcohol guys, though. You know, some of yeah, the no, some, some, of the, some of them are like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, some of these comedians also, you get to see, like, these guys could actually make, like, a full-on comedian series. But like the 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 ideas in these adverts are so out there, but it's like you only get like two seconds of it, or you're gonna get like three seconds of it, or whatever. But it's, and it's just like that are spent I in mean, those two why seconds. why haven't we had another pure Monati? We had pure Monati, it was doing well, and then no, and the, then the I mean also like be... even even late night news, like late night news was also really good. 
Yeah. And then, yeah. like, they, and then, you know. But it was like, the film, not the guys, by the way. The way. late 90s stand up comedians ruled the world, dog. When, you know, ruled South Africa. That pure Monati period. I remember yeah. Eminem was pulling out TV shows that yes. were basically run by stand up comedians. And you can kind of tell when a TV show is written by a stand up comedian. Same thing with that other one, ETV, Save Our Souls. Yeah, SOS. Was, SOS like, was really good, was, man. Like, and comedians. also, yeah, what happened with, to those things? We used to have, um, we used to have soapies. Um, <laughs> What's but that that's, one? That's when that's when ETV dopey, was still. Dopey, dopey. Yeah, my name fresh. is Dopey Shablala. Yeah, I remember oh, Dopey would hilarious. come in the window. He would come in the, through the window, dog. Even though the door is yeah. open. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm saying the thing is right. Like with this Netflix model, getting back to this spin-off thing. And again, if you guys are saying that that other one is really good, I'll I'll give I'll give it a look see. Just because, like in general, when I saw it, was uh like family shenanigans, family dramas, and. And yes, all of that sure, stuff, and it's drama. just like, and and I not personally, I'm tired of drama because it feels like, not even like it feels manufactured. It's just there's a lot of it, and people think this is how life should be, and I'm just like, dog, that's that's a lot of energy right. for, like you know, I imagine every day now you're plotting on your cousin, and your cousin is plotting on your sister, and now your sister's plotting on you. No, and but, I, but I, unfortunately, it's not that. It's just more like dysfunctional family. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying also more. even, but I'm saying also even like sometimes it's like, does every family have to be dysfunctional? Every, every one of them. Like, I mean, my family is not great, but I feel like we function. Like, but would, you watch, <laughs> would you watch, would you really watch a movie of a perfect family though? The, what, what's to watch then? Well, no, perfect, what perfect is a stretch. There is no perfect family though. No, but perfect is a stretch. But I'm saying like when we get into the drama and people like, you know, the drama is extra. It's not even like, this is not regular. This is not like normal, but people drama. will treat it. Yeah, people will treat yeah. it as normal, you know? And mm. it's like. Ah. And yeah. Okay. Melodrama, that is the correct word for yeah, it. Like we is, love that. Uh, and that's why I think uh, our soapies uh, are forever yeah. making so much money. Like I mean, um, scandal generation. Oh lord. Scheme some. Uzalo are still like they in the top Mubang. five, top ten most watched things. Yep. Yeah. Movango, they're still top ten. Dog, the time slot from I, six. I haven't watched six haven't until watched generations. It's all in years. I I couldn't tell you who's on there right now. Yep. Same. Yeah. Same here. That's why I cut the code a long time ago, bro. Like yeah, that. yeah. I mean, like, like I'm saying again, for me, like melodrama and like drama, just drama in general, where it has to be like men, not even manufactured, but like you know, it's just like, oh, this is a lot. Like, like ah, yeah. Let let me go back to let me go back to Mara Sengan because you, I don't need to hear about this. This I woman. I mean, there's drama in Naruto, but I do get what you mean. What hey, piece is like twenty years old, but at least he's going somewhere. He's looking for yeah, something. Yeah, like you know, yeah, like, yeah. And also, like when when you, when you get into the drama in there, the drama gets dealt with and resolved eventually. Like it feels like in a lot of these things, they it's, it's talking to out. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, like for me, it's just when whenever I see some, like if I see a comedy and it's supposed to be funny or whatever, I'd like it to be like funny and then resolve itself. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be dealing with just drama, 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 end type of thing because i'm like that's not what people are like let's stop this nonsense that we're all just dramatic for the sake of dramatics no mm. okay <laughs> guys so basically we might give it a shot we might give the movie a shot or yeah. the series a shot and yeah. uh, we'll probably let you guys know what we think about it do let us know your thoughts in the comments are you looking forward to this i mean it's a bit late maybe this could have been released in february during valentine's times but hey yes yeah. that would have yeah. been a yeah, that would probably would have been better yeah, and just a Netflix series for us or a, t- a movie. Suggest one for us, and we'll like you know, we'll watch it maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah, please I'm suggest no. a Netflix movie yeah. for us to watch South African, prefer- preferably yeah. because we, Ikiala Lama we... Wele, guys, that's the one you need to watch. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> that right, is guys. the most gangster <laughs> issue we'll ever <laughs> see. <now. laughs> okay, guys, uh, do you guys have any parting shots? I think we should wrap it up. I mean, there's nothing else. Uh, for the on our agenda, that's uh, yeah, Acolyte. Rob knows what I'm Ac- talking about. <laughs> Acolyte, yeah, um, we'll see. It depends on you, Mr. Extraordin. Otherwise, yeah, um, uh, guys, yeah, I mean, um, what, what was the other thing that we checked out? Um, uh, X Men, well, there was the Apocalypse, news. the rock, yeah, the apocalypse, yeah, rock is rock. I don't think he's a good choice for that. He'll, he'll, he'll be the rock, um. 
uh, yeah, the other and Esposito. Then I, Esposito. I hope he's an original character. And then uh, after that, it's the um, the movie Superman with Adam suit. Driver. Oh, the Superman suit. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Superman fans. Yeah, when you tell us to tell our fans to shut up on the internet. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> hmm? And then uh, Yo, Buck Me- has been fighting. Yo, Megalopolis. <laughs> Megalopolis uh, trailer. Again, up to you, uh, depending on how we watch it and whatever. Because, I mean, like, for me, if the ticket is over 190 rand, it's like... <laughs> and then Fall Guy. Yeah. Fall Guy trailer. Uh, Fall Guy. Start releasing movies on streaming services. It's fine. Yeah, it's yeah. A don't, 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 don't try and fight for don't this theater it. slot. Don't yeah, force yeah. it. Yeah, All right, yeah, you, but what remember, about they're you still talk? trying to keep the theater jobs. Because if they only release on streaming, that, that means cinema shut down. That's no, true. but then they gotta, then they gotta pick up, then they gotta pick up the Better slack projects. of the writing. They gotta do something that's gotta be worth the theater experience because it's all expensive for all of us. Yeah. So, right. mm, I f- I just feel the writing in general has gone down because I remember there'd be so many movies I'd watch that I'd never heard of, like the, I didn't see them at the TV cinema, right? and they they were they were good. They were these like I enjoyed them, but yeah. now. It's so like, it, it's like, I think the problem now is one of the problems is cancel culture. You know, you don't want to say anything or do anything. So everything is feels safe. PC. Nothing feels yeah, PC. Yeah. yeah, especially the comedies, like everything is PC. And then also it feels like everything's based on social media, not on just like, I have this idea and let me run with it. Whether right. it's no, but I think also with... writers let themselves be handicapped by those things. I think that's another thing mm. that happens. They don't look right. at it as a challenge to write within the box. They yeah. think that they've got to capitulate instead of saying, "Okay, how can I take this and flip it on its head or whatever?" Yeah. Like for example, and like that's why that. anime kicks ass a lot because, like for example, Dandadan, right, which is this manga I'm reading recently. There'll be this cute girl. And whatever, and she's supposed to be like, you know, her design says that, oh, I'm cutesy, what, 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 what. And then when you read her, she's one of the most foul mouthed people you ever see. <laughs> <laughs> and like she's cussing like a sailor, and she's like, you know, she's kicking dudes, and she's like, she's scrapping and fighting. And it's like, it's a weird juxtaposition, but it feels natural with the character because the writer is not thinking about outside forces, they're just writing. Mm, right. So, right. like, yeah. You just, but I'm made saying, me, you just made me miss Tanya the horror. Nah. <laughs> the evil is a masterpiece, but yes. Yeah, but like what I'm saying is, is that when you're in a box, you need to, you can also work within the box, right? Like, right. for example, mm. if we look at something like The Incredibles, that would be considered a woke movie because Mrs. Incredible is as capable as Mr. Incredible. Like, what's this? Yep. When Mr. Incredible is doing his thing, Mrs. Incredible, when she sneaks into the island, when she's punching out yes. all of those guys, when she's yes. doing all of that stuff, like, yes. she she saves the family, practically. Yep. Mr. Incredible mm. gets them in trouble. But I've never, I never sat there and thought, oh, she's better than Mr. Incredible. I just thought that, oh, she's awesome, or right. whatever, or this is an amazing female character, or whatever the case is, or whatever. Right. So, uh, yeah, I think, like, as much as there may be a box... Even if you want to go outside the box, it shouldn't be just to go against the box. It should be for the story. Right. Type of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. And you, Rob, do you have any putting shots? Um. Okay. I f- see, the walk thing is such a complicated issue because um, I think Incredibles now probably wouldn't be that woke because um, I think it would, it would. I don't think it would be hated because first of all, nowadays a lot of modern groups are like, should families exist in the first place? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> People are questioning uh, actually, everything. Wait, yeah, just to, just to People clarify, are questioning the sun. Yeah. Should the sun come up? That's how uh, it's just, going. Just up. to clarify something real quick. When we use woke, we're using it in the I terms see. of the way people use it on social media, not the actual definition of what yes. it meant from yeah. before. Yes. Okay? okay? So, yeah. We know people mis- are using the it wrong. They're of using it very is. wrong. But, yeah. yeah. Just in a sense of the movies and when things get released and it's like, oh, a woman's in charge of this and now it's woke. Yeah. yeah it's very all over the place right now. It's, it's a very... Com- one day we'll have a full discussion because I think it's fascinating, the whole modern identity talk now and then old school talk. I think it's fascinating. Right. But in terms of the stuff we're doing right now, um, I just want to say, Superman, I think I think we give um, James Gunn too much credit. I think I'm worried about a Superman movie. Um, but hopefully, I'm going to give him a chance. I, right. I have not that much hope. I wish him luck. As for Esposito, I, he's going to be good, whatever it is. 
if I hope it's not Von Doom, I think that's a bad idea. And I hope, I it's, hope not it's not a race swap in general at all. Personally, 100%. I I one hundred percent, dude. But it's going to be no question. I can't I can't yeah. even picture who he could be. That's right. that, that's not a race swap. That's a Marvel character. Do you know what I mean? Right. Can he be? Like, what's a major big five? Yeah, but I'm saying, like, the thing is, when Marvel keeps doing this, it doesn't reflect in the box office. It's it's that, never helped the movie. They True. Lose, so like, it's just like, like yeah, and also it's just like, yeah, as much as those guys may be, ra- like, again, I'm not condoning it, but as much as they may be racist, you might need their money for these movies. And so then, why not just play it safe, keep the characters the characters, and then look at the lesser characters that are the complexions of your Giancarlo Espositos and use those characters and, and elevate them. Yeah, yeah, because you can you can't rely on James Gunn to do the same thing again. He did it with Guardians of the Galaxy. We got a tree for for crying out loud, and we loved it. So we you, you just you only have who's one James Gunn words? who's yeah. taking risks like that. But remember, he does teamwork movies. So remember, right. Suicide Squad, fantastic team. Um, right. Guardians of the Galaxy, fantastic team. Right. Superman is just Superman. He's gonna have one shot at this. But so he has so he has so many characters in the Superman movie, by the way. So many heroes, superheroes. So you're right. I, he's forcing it to be a team, yeah. even though it's not a team. And that doesn't make sense. You know, but we'll see what. I'm yeah, we'll, we'll see what it is. But anyway, yeah. just yeah, Jim Collins. What anyway? You guys yeah. know my stance on that. Yeah. Uh, go yeah, ahead, Rob. But, but I think that I I I have no faith in whoever's the writer. <laughs> so um, moving on from that, the South African thing, I'm fine with that. Um, and that was oh, and Megalopolis. And Megalopolis. I'm excited for that one too. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, Zuko, did you give your part? Acolyte. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I have to watch it, I'm not watching it. Uh, new Superman suit. Um, it looks. I didn't like the picture, which made now the suit look terrible. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm sure the suit looks fine, but yes. whatever. I agree with uh, on the Giancarlo thing. Let's not race swap it. There's plenty of characters you, you can choose from to input. And there's plenty, like, read the fucking stories. Read the Please. lore. Or even if you don't read, Say even if you don't read like the read whole the comic Wikipedia, books, read the Wikipedia. Yes, exactly. Yes, yeah, watch, that's yes, what I'm saying. Google. Like understand, watch, watch understand their powers, understand watch, their watch friends, Mojo. know who's the enemy, <laughs> know what they do, understand their characteristics. Let's like, just fucking get the fucking comic character. Story, comic story, and it's done. Watch his YouTube yeah. channel. It's comic done. explained. Yes. Just, just, just what one, two What the hell, guys? You know, on. just understand. Just you know. Who is um, hire me? I will Doom. write it for free, like freaking <laughs> hell. Anyway, yes. Anyway, um, The Rock. Ooh, yeah. He, he should not be. I'm sorry. He's. I I love rock movies. I watch them. I have no issues with him. Yeah. But no. Continue with Jumanji. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> And your... It doesn't matter what movies he's been in. He cannot be Apocalypse. <laughs> and your tan shirts with their with their cargo sh- with their cargo yeah. pants. Yes. Um, full guy. Um, I don't know what to say. The trailer didn't blow me away. Yeah. It looked like a regular. It 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 didn't look like 130 million. It looked like, like an ad. Movie. It looked like an advert, bro. It like, it, like, like no, who's giving it, this it, money? Yo. It 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 looked like a Jason Statham movie with some comedy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, like the Hi. trailer looked looked like a, a, a Jason a Statham surprise. movie. Uh, a Ram- it looked like a Rambo movie with some comedy. There was nothing that says yo, hundred million was spent here. <laughs> right, right. Um, how to ruin a love affair? I enjoyed the trailer. It looks like it'll be fun. I'm sure it will have the usual South African problems of continuity and yep. stories ending up in the air. But hey, this is support because <laughs> right. the more we support, the more they grow, the more they grow, the better they'll be. Yeah. Megalopolis is the only thing that has got me smiling today. It looks intri- it, 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 it It's got me. I'm hooked. It, like that was probably the, the best trailer I've seen in a long time because it did what a trailer supposed to do. It got me interested in the freaking movie. It All didn't right. tell me the movie. It 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 made my mind wake up. You know. 
Yeah. It didn't say, here, here's Zuko, open up. Chuku, 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 chuku. <laughs> it said, here's the food, now feed yourself. Yeah. Okay. And now, um, yeah. All right. I'll go through mine quickly. Star Wars Aqualite, like I said, I don't know what's going on. Uh, it was too dark. I have no idea what's happening. I like Carrie Ann Moss, so I'll watch it because of her. Star Wars The Suit, um, like we said, it's a, I'll, I don't know what's happening with my English right now. Algamation? <laughs> Amalgamation. 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 Thank you, you so much. You must drink some water. I need some woolly water. water. <laughs> you need some woolly water. Amalgamation. You need some of, of that woolly water. <laughs> of different stuff. We went through all the actors and the, the costumes that we've seen in the past. So, I don't know. Corn sweat, cor, corn sweat might yeah. be a good um, um, Superman or Clark Kent. We'll see. I mean, Pattinson actually impressed me. So, we'll see how that goes. Um <laughs> Esposito, um, I love the actor. I just hope they really respect him. They don't make him uh, be part of projects that are goofy or just horrible. We don't want him to be defeated by ants. Please, let's not do that. All right? And then The Rock being cast as Apocalypse. For me, it just feels like another Black Adam. Because Apocalypse Egypt, the whole slave thing, whatever. You know what I mean? It just seems like it's on the nose. Uh, he's bald, I get it, but no. Um, he's bald, he's big, he's got flop, floppy eyebrows. He's bald, he's bald, enough said. Yeah, small guy, two attractive people, couldn't save this movie. That says a lot. Um, how to Ruin Love. Uh, it looks interesting. Um, I'm going to give it a chance, and then I'll give my honest opinion on it. And then... Um, as long as it's not another Zulu movie, I think... <laughs> I'll, 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 it'll be okay, I guess. And then Megalopolis trailer. I love Adam Driver, as I've said before. He's kind of like Michael Rappaport, who said, I've done some bad stuff, but I was not bad in them. So yeah. I think Adam Driver is a really great dramatic actor. I loved him in Marriage Story, and this is where I leave you. Um, I didn't really like Kylo Ren that much, but he really knocked it out of the park in those certain emotions that he needed to convey uh so yeah those are my thoughts so guys please do let us know your thoughts about all these things i'll probably chop down this episode uh into different segments because wow we covered a lot of stuff but yeah guys th- like i said before this is a different take on african frame that we've done rob and i just decided that this is the st- kind of stuff we're going to be doing do let us know uh, what do you think of this new feature do you like it um and yeah we're going to be releasing three movies uh, in the future, uh, you guys just stay tuned for that. It's going to be exciting times. So for myself, Mr. Extraordinary, Rob Sibeko, Buckmeister Cool, and Zanozuko Mlambo, the Fire Lord himself, we shall, we shall see you guys on the next one. Cheers! Peace! Ah, uh, no. That was fun, hey, guys. guys. <laughs>